Maybe it is. I got a lot of people. Right. Right. So the yeah. Everything's still working? That's cool. So David, move this down. Did you see how that feels? Yeah. Like, step back to you. What? To move this out. I got I'm forward, so. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
number 38, Jacob Herdan. Number 42, Matthew Calhoun. Number 44, Jacob Adam. You know it's colder back there. Number 53, Naya Black. And number 67, Samuel Kinsley. The Wildcats were coached by Jordan McGannis. The starting lineup for the Wildcats. The starting lineup for Saudi Daisy, head coach Justin Barnes, top bench, left tackle, number 79, Mason Chamber, left guard, number 50, Jonathan Rathman, center, center, 65, Will Riddick, right guard, 55, Mayhem, Right tackle, 76, Preston Bagley. Wide receiver, 3, Eshawn Eubanks. Wide receiver, 16, Landon Reese. Wide receiver, 12, Will Ackerman. Wide receiver, 5, Jalen Render. Running back, 9, Hayden Maynard. Quarterback, 1, Isaac Barnes. The starting offense for Sunday Day D. On defense, defensive end, 79, Mason Chambers. Defensive tackle, 50, Jonathan Rathman. Defensive end, 76, Preston Bagley. Outside linebacker, 2, Landon Lewis. Inside linebacker, 32, Isaac Coffey. Linebacker, nine. Malachi Hayden Boehner. Outside linebacker, number 11. Malachi Powell. Strong safety, 19. Jonah Gibson. Free safety, five. Jalen Render. Quarterback, number 14. Hayden Duran. Quarterback, number three. Sean Eubanks. Starting defense, Sonny Daisy. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> First quarter sponsors tonight, Tennessee Valley Federal Credit Union, 10K, Liberal Power Award. Valley Church, High Crest Bridge, Mark Collins, Davis Robinson, Arm Bureau Winchurch, the Athletic Shot. Football is always meant for the person. From the days you can't make it to the stadium, Chick fil A catering and our new mac and cheese appear to make your own celebration fantastic. Just run around the app, pick up at your nearest Chick fil A, pay your catering win. Private Ridge Wealth Management is a proud sponsor of Monday Night Sport Athletics. Reserve a firm that cares about why you invest, not just how much you invest. Contact Private Ridge Management today at 602 5700. Still needs to go back over there. I just, I just want to be able to access the
Second down, less than a yard to go. The ball is at the 34 yard line of Saudi Daisy. It is moving right to left here. Let's set the starters in a moment. We really haven't had much time. Pull out back there for a while. There's two receivers split to the left of the quarterback. Enough is going to go for the running back, Tyrell Romano. He's got a 10 back yard bridge. First down. Moves the ball across the middle. Romano on the carry. 25 yard line. Keep up the stop. Number 50. David Stewart. Receiver. Isaiah Johnson, Johnson on your receivers will be Tyrone Romano and Dodie Trust. Pinkle Jackson already got the carry tonight as a running back along with Mitchell Gibbons in the backfield. We'll get the offensive line here in the second first down. Ten yards to go for Oak Ridge. Just underway, 10.52 to play first quarter. Mitchell Gibbons is a junior quarterback. Three receivers split to his left, one running back, and Mitchell's going to pass. Going to hit hard. He's going to hit hard. He's going to hit hard. He's going to hit hard. Yeah, David, it looks like Sonny Daisy blitzed on that play, maybe an outside linebacker, and offensive line just maybe not pick it up, and guy came running straight through, knocked Mitchell down, Mitchell was able to get the ball away, I think Mitchell was just trying to throw it through the end zone, just wasn't able to get it there. So Sonny Daisy, both teams have had two covers here in the first 90 seconds of the ball game here, we're hitting Sonny Daisy the line once again, two receivers played to the left, two to the right, low snap, and off to the running back, and he's hit at the line, moves the ball forward, Later on the carry. Maybe two, before the stop is made by Oak Ridge's Flack, along with uh, Mike Hinsley. It'll be Black. a game Black. two, second down, eight yards to go. Eight. 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 Twenty-five to play, first quarter, score the ball game. Two turnovers here in the first 90 seconds. Yeah, it's going to be interesting if this base keeps up here, David, as a side of the stop the ball. Up the line the year, look over to the sideline here to get the play. Three days as I look at him, they don't look like a very big team. Honestly, looking down at him. 
Both teams kind of comfortable inside. In off to the running back, and he was going to be trying to get outside. He's going to be tackled. Way around the carry. He's going to third down, five yards to go. Yeah, this is number 42. Hell, who's third down? Five. And honestly, they look pretty good on that first screenplay of the game, and I guess if the quarterback is throwing interceptions like on the second play, then it might not be good for Sunday days if they throw. Thirty-five. He has dropped a hundred by number forty-two. Well, 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 back of the twelve, down. and they'll be forced to punt. So the snap was low. The quarterback didn't have anything to do with the temperature. Uh, here it is called. He couldn't hold on to the snap. He dropped it in his hand, but he didn't have anything to do with the Calhoun was coming from behind him. He just barely got the ankles and tripped. Yeah, and the quarterback, I believe, was Bagley here. Fair to punt. He's marking it at the point. It's closer to where it was. Uh, I think it was, you're right, it was about the 47 yard line. I think they put it officially at the 49 yard line. Either way, the day starts in Saudi Daisy territory, almost like they did on the previous drive. Time summary. Well, I'm sure that Mike Sheehan is listening right now for that scoring summary as the ball is at the 46 yard line. Mr. Norman doing our camera look up top with Christian Roses along with Matthew Charles and Lee Wexler. I'm going back to the station. I'm going to go to the trailer on Jim Franson. So they own seven yards to go. Hand off to you for the moment. Thank you. 
Eubanks still was able to rumble all the way down to about the 12, 13 yard line of the Wildcats. So as we talk about field position, uh, going back and forth all night long. Who needs to play here in the first quarter? A lot of action, 76 for score. Make sure to cool the opposing. The ball here opens 13 yard line. Put it back, the floor, back on the side line. The ball is going to be going back. The receiver's going to be going to the right. And that's going to go around back. He talked about that side line. Right around the carry. 15 yard line. Over the last two. Calhoun. Nice play by Matthew Calhoun. And 57, Matthew Calhoun. Excuse me, 67, Hensley. Second down. He starts off going right up to the left. That's a design run. Uh, obviously, the Wildcat defense had studied that and been prepared for it because they uh, lost him about three. Well, right back at the 15 yard line at second down. We'll call it 12 yards to go. Three and a half days to play first quarter, seven to six to score. They're going to pass. Pass no pass. It is by the way of the right down. That's incomplete. the pass a little bit. So we're third down. Knocked down by number 40. Isaiah Johnson. That's where's Isaiah Johnson. Third down. Third down 12 yards to go. 319 to play first quarter, seven to six to score. Yeah, Isaiah did a nice job there. I believe it was uh, Eubanks that ran a little bit of a slant right there. Uh, Barnes, their uh, quarterback for Sunday days, he threw it a little bit late. Has to be a well-timed drop. Uh, the guy had to wait for it, and uh, that's why it was incomplete. Third down, 12 yards to go, 319 to play. Last turn, we've got five turnovers in the first quarter. Quarterback's going to pass across the way, pass to the top. Moving out forward, as he around the six yard line, it'll be four times. complete, three. Bob by Johnson. The ball is going to be officially put down. It really breaks points in the corner. Four down, four. We'll bring the 15 into the game. Hamilton to attempt the field goal. For 10. 40. Mark, number 42 for Hamilton, their kicker, and their holder will be number 9, Hayes Mason. Put the block down at the 14-yard line, kick is up, and it looks good. He's up, and he's good. Five years, 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 he's good. I know it's a real hard time. 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 Two weapons can get here. Two receivers to his right, two to the left, one run, running back. Tyrell Romano turns the motion, and he gets the handoff. That's inside, moves the ball to a good yard. Gains about six on the play. Carry by number 21. Romano. 220 to play. Tyrell Romano. Stopped by Rinder. Second down. 
A long 70 yard return setting up a field goal for them as the Wildcats, the Wildcats have the ball first down and 10 yards to go. Lazy. And moving across <laughs> the line, and I believe that's going to cost Sadi Daisy five yards. Now, here we are up in Sadi Daisy. The three oldest people standing watching this game and doing our work here, our youngest guy, our camera guy. We're going to have to find the chair to sit down. Uh, I like the way that Mike phrased it. I, I don't want to repeat it because I like Stuart, but uh, it did make me good. Well, I had nothing to uh, I can't really say it much more than that. Five yard step off against the Trojans. The ball is right at midfield. The offense moving right to left here. First and five. Then 13 counting first quarter. Now, yes, we'll win the ball again. That'll be Kendall Jackson busting it. I believe he's moving across the field. Tyrell. Up to the 47-year-old. I think he's looking at that. He's moving to the line. He's moving to the line. That's another 10 back of Oak Ridge. He's still exploding to the line for Oak Ridge. Yeah, Oak Ridge has gotten really good. The offensive line has done a great job over the past couple weeks of opening up those holes right up the middle. Several times they've done that for Kendall Jackson all along months. Tyrell. About Julie Damon, even in this game, is starting to get more and more action. There's down 10 yards to go. The ball inside of Daisy territory at the 37-yard line. Under a minute to play first quarter. Trojans lead the Wildcats 10-6. The 15th time in the last 20 years the two teams have played either in the playoffs or the regular season. There's down 10. Here comes the handoff. It's all right. 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 Lockheed's trying to run it down, slightly off the line, right there, and uh, Sadie keeps the place for now. Sadie Lockheed will stop Tyrell there for a loss on the play. Second down, 12 yards to go. That might have been the final play on the first quarter. Lockheed's don't seem to be in too much of a hurry. Play clock is down to 18. The, the game clock is 10 seconds. Let's see if Mitchell gets the playoff. They're down to 7 seconds. Second down, 12 yards to go. Four seconds. They are going to pitch here on the left side. That will be Kendall Jackson. Kendall Jackson explores forward for a 10 back of Oak Ridge first down. It's all the way down to the 20-yard line as the first quarter comes to a close. We play one quarter of football. It's on the Daisy High School. The Wildcats are going to start the first quarter. Here's four. Welcome back. I'm going to get you two. Oak Ridge. 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 It's a couple of the 
Jackson was going towards the sideline, which was decided to keep it, ended up picking the first down. Looks like it'll be first and goal. Ball's going to be at the 10-yard line. It is indeed going to be quarter like that at that point. It's just kind of keeping what they do best is run the ball. And they've been able to throw the ball at times this season, but tonight they've been running the ball. They Side there, top nine. Uh, the ball, and he was able to look at the goal side to about the forty-yard line. As uh, they had Mitchell covered on the play as well as Kevin Jackson, so Mitchell had to hand it off. Okay, that's down ten to six, and five turnovers in the uh, in the first quarter. We'll talk about that time. Mark will do the statistics. Uh, Mark has had the ball at the three-yard line. It'll be second down, goal to go, five four. The Wildcats with Matthew Swigert split off to the right side. The Wildcats are going to run the ball. Kendall Jackson is going to miss the goal. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, O'Clair. Mitchell gave it. He handed it off to Kendall. Kendall got slammed down, but Mitchell had it all along, and the Wildcats have their first lead. Yeah, it's a really nice job there. It looks like the Wildcats are trying to do the option. I think they were able to look at one side. Uh, and uh, they back to the other side. So they were able to move the side of the ring. Shot there by uh, Magic Smiley. He did a great job with the block of this guy. He did a lot of good touches. And it looks like he wanted to go to the ground, too. And the Wildcats, again, 0 to 10. 10 minutes, 29 seconds to go. Here in this first half, here from Saturday, we're going to have some plays. The Wildcats will have to use good efforts again. Turn two more backs. Smiley to the right side. The pitch will go to Kendall Jackson. Good morning. 
to play junior league here. The winner advances to play either the West High Rebels or the Walker Valley team. We're going to pass. He's in trouble. Tries to get away from it. Trying to throw up the field and slides down behind the line of scrimmage. Barnes only carries about two. Uh, kind of, one. Hit, but, you know, you've got to get some down. yardage there. Right? Loss of a yard. Can't be afraid of contact. I mean, that's it's football. I mean, that's what it is. You're going to get hit. You're going to get tackled. Uh, if you're on offense, you got to try to get as many yards as you can. It's going to be, let's see, I'm out. Halted. Let's see the play clock. Uh, that's what they're talking about. And, uh, I was just saying the play clock didn't start on the last play, um, so that may be something that they're discussing. I think that starts with the uh, clock operator on the sideline there. Well, I have the opportunity. I'd like to thank our sponsors who've been with us all season long. Fox and Farley, Tony's at Law, Tim Bank of Oak Ridge, OBGYN Associates of Oak Ridge, Donnie Sharp, and East Tennessee Smiling Sports, the Pizza Inn, Denzo Manufacturing, Dr. William Willingham, the Fargate Rebel Hospital, Mortgage Investors Group, the Oak Ridge Utility District, Cook's Country Systems, Oak Ridge Tennessee at Oak Ridge, Tony's Pro Loop Center, Two locations on the team by Tracy Bowden, CPA, Simpson on the bottom of Oak Ridge, Chris Wood at Cry Life Realtor, Jackson Square Barbershop, the other one, Dr. John Burgess, Munson Pharmacy, Jim Norman, the Joyce, Meredith, Craig Crawford, Norman Attorneys at Law, Nathan Miser with Shelter Insurance, Gallo Loco Mex Mexican Restaurant, and of course the class of 1989, Chris Pullen sponsoring our, our, our primal cast on YouTube. Got it down to 12. Little screen pass is behind the receiver. He makes the catch at the 20. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Didn't get a great spot. Jacob Bourbon, Preston Turner there for the stop. Gain on the play of about six. It'll bring up third down, and we'll call it five yards to go. Didn't get a really good spot at all. No, I think they got a little bit further than they were supposed to. It was a nice little screen pass basically there as uh, the two receivers on that side were able to step out and block it, and Bourbon had to use his speed to get out and make a tackle. Third down five, three receivers to the right, single man to the left. The Wildcats playing man coverage. Quarterback's going to pass in a lot of trouble. In a lot of trouble. He is going backwards. Now we'll run. Fires a pass. It's going to be caught. Caught by Scotty Daisy on a beautiful catch. Nice catch by number three. Yeah, number three on that play, I believe, is Eubanks. Uh, Kashawn Eubanks there, nice job on that play. It was just a little comeback route, ran about a 10, 15 yard up the field, took his foot in the ground and come back toward the sideline. And it, honestly, that's not bad coverage. Preston Turner was right in his grill on that, and uh, it's just a well-thrown ball and a uh, nice play by Eubanks. Second ten for Scotty Daisy, eight minutes, 54 seconds and counting in the first half, 12-10 Oak Ridge in the lead. Looking from the sideline to the play, three receivers to the right. We'll set the defense. I don't know if we've set the defense here for the Wildcats. We'll get that in a second. It's been a lot of things happening up here. They're going to pass. Pumping. Fires a pass. Ca catch is caught. And the hammer, Jacob Adams and one other, makes a stop right at the 35-yard line. Yeah, David, as uh, it looked like he had a little bit of trouble breaking through uh, his reads there. He just kind of moved to his guy. To start the um, defense for the Wildcats, uh, linebacker Matthew Calhoun, Cole Adams, Jacob Adams, along with Jacob Bourbon. The defensive backs, Isaiah Johnson, Preston Turner, uh, Brian Kelly, and Zach Zucklogle. The defensive line are Nyan Flax, Daniel Hensley, and Jackson Adams. Second down, we'll call it six yards to go. 8.05 to play in the first half. 12 to 10, Oak Ridge in the lead. Russell to pass, in trouble. Mows the ball up the field, pass is gonna be incomplete. Preston Turner defending, good coverage by Preston that time. It'll bring up third down and six yards to go. This is the field crew on Dad's Ranch. I figured you might be tonight here, whether watching on YouTube Live or on Channel 15, I think we've got the streaming video going as well. We do, and uh, even on uh, radio, uh, 92.7 FM and uh, prepradio.com. So we are, I guess, international at this point, David. Wildcat Network tonight from Scotty Daisy. Third down, we'll call it five yards to go. It's a long five at the 35-yard line. Scotty Daisy changing the play here with 7.57 to play. In the first half, Oak Ridge on top, 12 to 10. And now play is halted. A timeout is asked for by the Trojans. 12-10 our score. We'll be back with Scotty Daisy in 60 seconds.
back once again to Scotty Daisy, Tennessee, 7.57 to play first half, 12 to 10, Oak Ridge. Quarterback's going to pass across the way, pass is dropped at the 50-yard line. Preston Turner defending is fourth down, and one of the Trojans is slow to get up. Let's see if he's going to get up okay. He might have to take an injury timeout. This injury timeout is brought to you by Muncie's Pharmacy, dedicated to the health. Of, of you and all of your customers. We'll take a break. Oak Ridge on top 12 to 10. We'll be back with Scotty Daisy in 60 seconds. back once again to Saudi Daisy High School here on FM 92.7, FM 94.7, prepradio.com. Wildcats back to receive the punt, leading 12 to 10. It is fourth down and about five and a half yards to go. Young man's going to be punting from around the 25-yard line. Good snap, rolls to his right, will punt it. Ready to be style kicks, going to angle out of bounds. It's going to go, it's going to be actually picked up by Oak Ridge, who runs out of bounds at around the 33-yard line. And that is where the Wildcats will take over first down and 10 yards to go. So we got the picture down, it sounds like, but we're trying to work on the sound on our uh, streaming broadcast here. The Wildcats in a 12-10 to 10 ball game, 7.43 to play. Yeah, David, as it uh, looked like that one, I thought the Saudi Daisy Trojans were going to run a little bit of a fake there, but it was just a uh, rugby-style punt from the side. Uh, that was there to get it off and get out of the way and uh, uh, get the ball down to about the 32-yard uh, line. Here come the Wildcats to the line once again. Jonathan Stewart, Jalen Hayward will be receiver split to the right side. The Wildcats have Kendall Jackson, Tyrell Romano in the backfield. First down, 10 yards to go. Wildcats are going to hand it off to Romano. Romano moves the ball across the 40. A first down across the 45 up to the 47-yard line. That's a 10 back of Oak Ridge. First down. Another nice run by Tyrell Romano. Really nice job there by uh, Kendall Jackson, I believe it was, to maybe make some moves there right off the uh, left tackle and able to get up for the first down. Uh, Oak Ridge has been going off tackle all night long, and it's really seemed to work for him so far. Ball is officially at the 47-yard line of Oak Ridge. Wildcats on top, 12 to 10, 7.23 to play here in the second quarter here at Saudi Daisy High School. Appreciate you listening to our broadcast here. The Wildcats wearing their gray pants along with their white jerseys. It'll be Oak Ridge coming to the line. Saudi Daisy wearing their gold and blue. As the handoff's going to go to the Wildcat running back, he's trying to get outside. Kendall Jackson, a stiff arm, moves the ball to the 50-yard line. It's going to be, be a gain of about three, and he did that all on his own. It's a really nice job there as uh, it seemed like Saudi Daisy overloaded the uh, right side of the offensive line of the Wildcats, and Kendall made a nice play there, nice stiff arm off to the side, as you mentioned, able to get two or three yards. Kendall came up a little limp there, so it would be inter interesting to see if he's uh, hurt. 12 to 10 is our score. The Wildcats on top, 6.38 to play here in the first half. The Wildcats, who normally have been pretty effective at throwing the ball this year, haven't been able to throw the ball in this ball game. They've just been running the ball quite effectively. You're right. It looks like he might be holding his quad a little bit or his thigh. We'll see. Second down, eight yards to go. The ball just shy of midfield. And the Wildcats' Mitchell Gibbons moves the ball to the 49, stripped of the ball, and they're going to say what? Are they going to say it's a fumble or what? Ball, I think it's no signal. It, it seemed like they called him down so far. I think uh, Saudi Daisy fans are going to be very upset about this. As, uh, it was a nice play there by Mitchell to get upfield, get three yards, because uh, I'll tell you what, they were tackling Tyrell and they were tackling Kendall no matter what. They weren't necessarily going after Mitchell as their first hit. See what Oak Ridge can do on this third and long here. 5.47 to play. 
Play clock is at 24 and counting. The ball is in Toddy Daisy territory at the 49-yard line. 12 to 10 is our score. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top by two. Here comes Oak Ridge to the line. They need to get to the 43-yard line to get a first. The Wildcats, Mitchell Gibbons, a quarterback, going to pass, looks, fires it in the flat. Pass is going to be caught for a 10 back of Oak Ridge first down at the Saudi Daisy 39-yard line. Nice play that time. Long way across his body to get the pass out there, but it was with, with caught in his first and 10 Oak Ridge. Yeah, it's a really well-designed play, too. Everybody thinking so far it's going to go to Kendall or Tyrell, and uh, Tyrell leaped out of the backfield there, and uh, Isaiah Johnson ran a comeback route, ran about 15 yards upfield, headed back to his sideline. Mitchell put it right on him and got a nice first down inside Saudi Daisy territory. Wildcats on top, 12 to 10, five minutes to play. In the first half here, chilly night here in Hamilton County. Glad, glad you've all tuned in wherever you might be. Ball's at the 39-yard line. Wildcats, bad pitch. I think Mitchell is about to get blasted, so he fires it off to, to uh, Kendall Jackson, and it was point blank. Kendall's lucky he even caught it. It's going to be a loss of about seven. I think he either should have thrown that at his feet or because he lost big yardage there. Yeah, he may not have wanted to necessarily throw it at his feet because Kendall was behind him, so it could have possibly caused a fumble. However, uh, you obviously want your quarterback to step up and kind of attack that defensive end, force him to tackle him, and give Kendall a little bit more time to catch that pass. Loss on the play, loss of seven. Second down, 17 yards to go. Ball back at the 49-yard line. High snap. Quick pass out here to Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan needs to move his feet a little more aggressively, got up to the 40-yard line where it'll be for the Wildcats. Third down and 10 yards to go. 12 to 10 is our score. The Wildcats on top by two. The Wildcats a little sluggish on that one. Yeah, Coach Wise, actually, I think what he's trying to do here is run a little bit of a play action, uh, fake it to the running back, and try to get time for the defense or the line and the receivers to get downfield to make plays. That one just a little short screen pass to Jonathan Stewart, able to get upfield for about six, seven yards for back to the original line of scrimmage. Wildcats have Dalen Hayward along with Jonathan Stewart split out to the right, two receivers to the left, 12 to 10, third down, 10 yards to go. The show blitz once again. Mitchell Gibbons and flags are down on the play. Might have been some motion on the part of the Wildcats. I was just looking at the play clock. It was at zero, possibly delayed, and I'm not sure. Signal. I didn't see a preliminary signal. It's going to be false start against the Wildcats. Three minutes, 22 seconds to play, so it's e even harder now. It'll be third down, 15 yards to go. Yeah, David, and uh, you're in Saudi Daisy territory, which is a positive thing. However, uh, you can pin them back if you don't necessarily pick up the first down here, but obviously the Wildcats need to get a good chunk of yardage, probably about a 10-yard gain or so to get back close to the line of, uh, to get a first down. At the 45-yard line, two receivers to the left, including Isaiah Johnson. Mitchell Gibbons to pass. Fires it across the way. Pass is dropped. A little bit behind Jalen Hayward, and it's going to be fourth down, and the Wildcats will be forced to punt. Yeah, it's a little bit behind Jalen Hayward there. I was looking down the field a little bit as Jonathan Stewart was running down the middle of the field behind the safety on that play. So he was probably about the 10 or 12-yard line, but obviously Mitchell had a lot of pressure in his face from the uh, right defensive end who uh, got around Jacob Kesterson on that play. It'll be fourth down, 15 yards to go. Brady Hudson will be punting the ball away for the Wildcats. 3.06 to play, second quarter, 12 to 10 the score. The Saudi Daisy band looks like they'll be performing here. Hudson's punt is high, angling to the right side. It's going to stay in bounds. going to be rolling dead at the 10-yard line and just between the 9 and the 10, and that is where Saudi Daisy will have it. First down, 10 yards to go. Good punt that time. By Hudson, no return. 2.54 to play first half, 12 to 10. Not the best played first half of football, but the Wildcats have a two-point lead. The Wildcats have done a much better job here in the second quarter of recovering from those uh, first quarter miscues with the turnovers and everything here. And obviously they put Saudi Daisy in a bad position here inside their own 10-yard line, forcing them to go about 90, 91 yards if they want to tie, or I'm sorry, if they want to take the lead here going into halftime. Back to the line will come Saudi Daisy, quarterback. He is a tall, slender young man. He's going to hand it off to the running back who tries to get wide. He's going to move the ball forward. Jacob Adams tackles him at around the 15, 248 to play. I, I don't want to jinx everybody, but it's been a penalty-free, uh, really, first half for the most part. 
Yeah, David, uh, except for the previous one, I think on the last drive with the back Oak Ridge up. But uh, Man Maynard, the running back for Sadie Daisy, kind of slipped in between two defenders there, able to get up for about a five-yard gain. Around five yards to go. They're going to run it again, trying to look for running room and going to go through an arm tackle and move the ball up to the 18-yard line. Maynard once again. It'll be third down, two yards to go, 2.15 to play in the first half. The play clock is not moving, or the there was a flag on the play, that's why. As they're looking over to the sideline, it is going to be what? I think it's going to be a legal procedure against Saudi Daisy, and that'll be a five-yard step off against them. Two minutes, 16 seconds to play first half. Oak Ridge on top, 12 to 10. The winner to take on the winner of West and Walker Valley. We'll try to track down that score for you. I'm thinking West is going to have their way, but you never know on a cold night. Yeah, and West should have their way. Uh, West has got a really a lot of good athletes and several uh, really good people on defense. I think their two uh, defensive line are really good. So it'll be interesting to see what West does uh, this week and possibly if uh, Oak Ridge will be able to face them next week for a rematch. Second down, seven yards to go, 2.16 to play. They're going to put the ball down back at the 10-yard line. Uh, Officials are struggling a little bit to spot the ball. Everybody up here uh, saw it the way it should be, but uh, maybe we have the benefit of being a little higher here. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go, 2.13 to play. I think the Wildcats might try to use some of their timeouts if they can get a good stop here. Saudi Daisy content to work a lot of time off the clock. They don't really want Oak Ridge to get their hands on the ball once again. Second and 10, quarterback back to pass. Screen pass is going to be caught, running backwards. And he's going to be buried at the six. And I'd call a timeout right here, James. And Coach Gaddis did. He's almost out there with the official at the 15-yard line. Pause on the play. We'll take a quick timeout. Minute 51 to play. When we come back, it'll be third and 12. We'll be back to, we'll be back to Saudi Daisy High School following this 60-second timeout. back once again to Saudi Daisy High School. Third down, 12 yards to go. Saudi Daisy with the ball at the seven yard line. Russell wants to pass. Pressure goes deep down the way. Could be picked off. Preston Turner pulls it down. He picks it off. And the Wildcats will take over at the 38 yard line. First and 10. High pass and the second interception of the night. Preston Turner with his first. You know, Nyan Flack and Isaiah Boone are having a really good night right in the middle of the defensive line for the Wildcats as they've been able to get pressure two plays in a row on the quarterback who had to just float that one up as high as he could and as far as he could. He threw it so far up that I, Preston was able to undercut the receiver. There was uh, a safety over top. I believe Jack Raplogo, if it went any further, just a terrible decision there. Really fortunate for the Wildcats because they get, they get the ball inside the uh, side Daisy territory. At the 38-yard line, first down, 10 yards to go, a minute 41 to play. The Wildcats still have two timeouts remaining. Mitchell Gibbons, time to pass, across the way, pass is caught. Wildcats have a 10 back of Oak Ridge first down across the 25 yard line up to the 23 where he's driven down hard. First and 10 though, that might be the only the second completion I believe for Mitchell in the, in the third, third completion. And it'll be Oak Ridge as they stop the clock just for a second to move the chains, something they didn't do last week at Fulton, but uh, you know, I like that. So. It helps the Wildcats, and it helps it basically gives you time to recover and get reset at the line of scrimmage. The Wildcats will probably start right at the uh, whistle here as they are ready to go at the line of scrimmage. First down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 24. At minute 27 to play first half, 12 to 10. Wildcats in the lead. Mitchell rolls to his left, looks, fires a pass, 
pass is going to be caught at the 18-yard line. Wasn't exactly sure who that was going to. It is caught by Isaiah Johnson. The Wildcats are going to spend one of their timeouts, I believe. Minute 13 to play. We appreciate everybody listening to us. We appreciate the class of 1989, James, for streaming the video here. Stuart Dorman is our top camera guy. We've got some guys down on the, on, the, on the field that we can't hook into the broadcast itself. But if you are listening to our broadcast right now, if you want to make a comment or if you're watching it on, on YouTube right now, the class of 1989, uh, Chris Pullen primarily is uh, responsible for our sponsorship here. And we appreciate all of you listening to us on the radio tonight. And uh, if, if, you're, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a comment where you're watching it from. We appreciate it. Yeah, David, as uh, we've obviously been able to improve uh, what we've done so far uh, video-wise and be able to get it out to more people, which is awesome. A couple of scoring updates. Wes is up on Walker Valley 29 to nothing. Powell is up on Lenore City 37 to nothing. And uh, last check, Ray County was up on Fulton 21 to 7. So, so far, the uh, our Region 3 doing pretty well as the Wildcats have the ball at the – 17-yard line of Saudi Daisy, a minute 13 to play. The Wildcats have one timeout remaining here. 12 to 10 is our score. The Wildcats, three receivers to the left. Jonathan Stewart here to the right. It's going to be Oak Ridge quick pass, and he's going to get a first down and more. He moves the ball across the 10, down to the 9-yard line. And let's see, the Wildcats will have another 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. A minute, seven to play. So many turnovers in this game. Uh, three for each team, I believe. As the Wildcats have it at the Saudi Daisy 9, first down, goal to go, a minute six and counting, 12 to 10, Oak Ridge in the lead. Junior quarterback Mitchell Gibbons at quarterback, hands it off Kendall Jackson. That's a touchdown for the Wildcats. Kendall Jackson takes it in, and Oak Ridge increases their lead to 18 to 10 with 55.8 seconds to play in the first half. Really nice play there. Obviously, a lot of people think you're going to pass to try to get as many downs as possible. And uh, Coach Wyatt dials up a little bit something different. as a little bit of a triple option there as uh, they sent Tyrell, Tyrell Romano looping around back and just handed it off to Kendall Jackson right up the middle. It scampers in for about nine yards touchdown. It'll be the Wildcats going for the extra point. 18-10 the score, 55.8 seconds to play in the first half. So the Wildcats take advantage of the turnover. The kick is on its way. It's up, and it is good. The Wildcats on top of Saudi Daisy, 19-10. to We'll take a break. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. Oak Ridge High School band playing across the field as Brady Hudson prepares the kickoff for Oak Ridge. Pretty good turnaround. The Wildcats fell behind in this ball game, 10 to 6, have rattled off since that time to take the lead as Brady Hudson boots another good one, strong, deep to the one yard line, to the five, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, trying to get outside. Boom! He's knocked down at the 20 yard line. The Wildcats make the stop. I think it was Jack Replogel. Not sure exactly. No, it was Jack Replogel. Wildcats in the lead now, 19 to 10. Really nice coverage there. Eubanks tried to catch it and go off to his right, able to get up to about the 20-yard line where he would have gotten if he'd gotten into the end zone. Anyway, nice coverage there by Jack Replogle, who will stay on for defense as Saudi Daisy has about 50 seconds left in the first half. That's what they try to do here. They still have two of their timeouts remaining, 47.5 seconds to play. Quarterback's going to hand it off to the running back. The Wildcats trying to track him down and trying to run him out of bounds, and Jacob – Adams makes a stop at the 30-yard line, shy of a first down. He stayed in bounds, 36 seconds and counting, 19 to 10. 
the Wildcats in the lead as we're streaming live. Thanks to who? The class of 1989. We appreciate them. We, the TV Lost the Belay charges in the playoff to stream live, and it was a substantial donation from the class of 89. We really appreciate them and really appreciate the opportunity to get this out to uh, all of the Wildcat faithful and all the Wildcat fans that are out there listening to us, not just in Tennessee, but all across the world. And of course, that love our radio. I, I'm a radio guy. That was the final play of the second quarter, and the Wildcats will head to the dressing room, which I think is their bus as they head in across the field there. The Wildcats have the lead 19 to 10, and um, James, uh, your thoughts on the first half? Uh, obviously, it was uh, not the most uh, efficient first half to start off. The, there were probably five turnovers in the first half, and I think in the, or the first quarter, an additional turnover in the second quarter caused by the Wildcats on the uh, Preston Turner interception. So uh, not a very clean game to start the uh, ball game here. Uh, Penalty-wise, it was fairly clean. Wildcats uh, have been really effective running the football and uh, throwing the football needs to improve, obviously. But you got to be impressed with uh, Coach Miner and his defense as he they have continued to play well. We would also like to thank our sponsors for tonight's game. Uh, that include Fox and Farley Attorneys at Law, Tim Bank of Oak Ridge, OBGYN Associates of Oak Ridge, Donnie Sharp with East Tennessee Spine and Sports, the Pizza Inn in Oak Ridge, Denzo's Manufacturing, Dr. William Minahan, DDS, MacArthur Hospital, Animal Hospital, Mortgage Investors Group, the Oak Ridge Utility District, Cook's Comfort System, Ortho Tennessee of Oak Ridge, Service Pro Roof Center with two locations on the Turnpike, Tracy Larrabee CPA, Sexton Automotive of Oak Ridge, Chris Morton with Prilac Realtors, Jackson Square Barbershop, the other one, John Burgess DDS, Muncie's Pharmacy, Jim Norman with Joyce Meredith, Phil, Phil Croft, Jim Croft, thank you, and Norman, Attorneys at Law, Nathan Miser, Miser with Shelter Insurance, Dio Loco Restaurant, and PrepRadio.com. We will be back after this three-minute break.
Welcome back once again to Saudi Daisy High School here on FM 92.7, FM 94.7. I'd like to send a shout out to my boy, Nathan Baker, uh, Mel and Frankie, his family watching back in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And that just tells us we've got a, a long reach here tonight. Yeah, it's pretty cool that, uh, you know, thinking back to when I was playing, that it was really more of a local thing where you could really only hear it in Oak Ridge or if we had the stadium cast on, which we attempted to do tonight, you could listen there. Whereas uh, now you can literally go anywhere throughout the United States and be able to listen or uh, possibly in the world if you had the uh, YouTube channel up. So the Wildcats have the lead currently by a score of 19 to 10. The Wildcats fell behind on a long fumble return. We'll have a complete scoring summary here in a moment when uh, when uh, Mark will do that for us. And but uh, and the Wildcats also gave up a field goal after their touchdown after missing an extra point. I know Coach Gaddis is not going to be happy with the special teams at this point because they've missed an extra point. They allowed a long return, which set up that field goal, and and they kicked the ball out of bounds. But all that being said, the Wildcat defense has been tough. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I think the Wildcats would kind of define their last couple uh, games would be adversity. Obviously, they faced adversity with the Scar of the Mount Juliet game. They faced adversity as uh, they kind of came down towards the end of the game with Powell, and last week obviously was not how they wanted it. But in all aspects of those games, Oak Ridge has been able to respond in some form or fashion, and obviously they've responded well. Defense is playing well. Offense has been able to move the football running-wise. So uh, obviously they've been able to do that because they're now leading 19 to 10 at halftime. Saudi Daisy Band's performing down here in front of us here. The Wildcats on top, as James mentioned, 19 to 10. We'll take another break. We're going to send it back to Brian Bennett. When we come back, we'll probably have the scoring summary and the stats. We'll get to those in three minutes.
David Clary back here along with James Branson, Mark Case, our statistician, along with Connor Hayes. We've got Christian Roses along with um, uh, Matthew Charles. We also have Stuart Dorman and Lee Wexler, Ryan Bennett, our engineer, back in the station, the Wildcats in the lead. Chilly night, but we were here last year in the second round of the playoffs, and honestly, I think it was colder. Uh, much colder, and I believe it has uh, kind of rained recently, if I remember correctly, that game. So the field was uh, kind of soggy that night, and uh, uh, the conditions obviously not good, and Wildcats came out on top that night and obviously hoping for a very similar uh, result tonight. I remind everybody that if you listen to us on the radio, and we love the radio, I am a radio guy. I mean, I am a radio guy, but tonight we're in Soddy Daisy, and a long trip, and obviously it's, I don't know, I hope we didn't keep people from coming because that might be one of the smaller Oak Ridge crowds I've seen, honestly, in a long time. But <laughs> if you are watching us, we appreciate you watching us on YouTube. You can, If you're listening to us on the radio and say, hey, I can watch the game, you can go to YouTube and, and look up prepradio.com, and we're streaming the game, and you can watch the second half of this game. Brought to you by the class of 1989. And, and you know, obviously, that was 30 years ago, but that, that class is – was an outstanding class. They had basketball team that went all the way to the second, to, to the final four in the state. Daryl Miller and that company. Chris Corwin uh, is the guy for primarily kind of leading that up, and we appreciate him. And I know we're getting a lot of comments. If you're listening to us or watching us, I keep saying listening because I'm a radio guy. I keep forgetting we're doing TV. If you're if you are watching it, uh, let us know on the comments there. And we'd love to know where you're you're watching it from. Yeah, and we really do appreciate you watching and uh, giving us feedback. And we've got multiple sources of feedback, and we've been able to hopefully improve the broadcast. I believe at one point uh, Becky Hayes texted, texted you and said uh, she loved the class of 1989. She was a big fan of that class. Yeah, the Wildcat basketball team started practice on Monday. They're getting ready for their first ball game. The Lady Wildcats will take on Meigs County on November the 19th. That will be a home game for the Lady Wildcats coming off of a Final Four performance a year ago, the first game the boys and the girls will be playing will be November the 22nd. That'll be at Hardin Valley. That'll be a Thursday night. And, of course, we'll broadcast on FM 92.7 starting with that Hardin Valley ball game. It feels like basketball season now with this temperature. I mean, it is, it's going to be really cold, and I know uh, next week there's a chance of snow. I know many more people are more excited about basketball season. To me, I'm more of a football guy, so uh, – uh, but I know people get excited about that. I'm excited. I've always been a big uh, Lady Wildcat fan and a uh, Lady Vols fan, so I'm very excited to see how they improve as well as the boys. Uh, the boys got a lot of good talent coming up as uh, Oak Ridge or Robertsville and Jefferson have started their basketball seasons as well this week. Mark's still working on the stats, and uh, primarily, normally Mark's a little quicker about things, but he, he's also been the technician on the streaming live, so he's kind of multitasking. He's our producer tonight for, this, uh, for the show. We'll call Mark Hayes our producer, but Shauna definitely runs the family. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a quick time out. Once again, our score here at halftime, the Saudi Daisy Band still playing. 19 to 10. We'll be back with a look at the scoring summary and the stats following this three-minute timeout.
Marquez back here at Saudi Days High School, where at the half, Oak Ridge leads by a score of 19 to 10. Let's look at the scoring summary. Um, in the first quarter, Saudi Daisy strikes first on a around a 50-yard fumble return. The point of attempt by Cooper Hamilton was good, and Saudi Daisy led by seven to nothing. With 4:29 remaining in the first quarter, Tyrell Romano takes the ball four yards for the Wildcats as he gets in the end zone. Point of attempt by Camden Malcody or Camden Malcody was no good, and Oak Ridge cuts into the lead by a score of seven to six. With 2.35 remaining in the first quarter, Cooper Hamilton kicks a 24-yard field goal for Saudi Daisy to extend their lead 10 to six. In the second quarter, Mitchell Gibbons takes the ball four yards with 10.29 remaining in the second quarter. The uh, Oak Ridge went for a two-point conversion that was no good and Oak Ridge led 12 to 10. With 55.8 seconds remaining in the first half, eight-yard run by Kendall Jackson puts the Wildcats once again in the end zone. This time, Malcody's point after attempt was good, and Oak Ridge has a lead at halftime, 19 to 10. Looking at the statistics, first for Oak Ridge, they're led on the ground by Kendall Jackson. He has 68 yards on eight carries. Tyrell Romano, 59 yards on nine carries. Mitchell Givens has carried the ball five times, netting no yards. So as a team, the Wildcats have carried the ball 22 times, totaling 127 yards on the ground. Through the air, quarterback for the Wildcats, Mitchell Gibbons, he's five of 10 for 46 yards. He has two interceptions in the ball game. His long is 14 yards. Tyrell Romano, he's the receiver who had that 14 yard reception. He also had a nine yard reception. He has two receptions for 23 yards. Preston Turner has a nine yard reception. Isaiah Johnson has a seven yard reception. And Jonathan Stewart has a seven yard reception as well. Wildcats have 10 first downs in the first half. They've been penalized uh, two times for 15 yards. On the ground, as I said, the Wildcats had 127 yards on 22 carries. They have 46 yards through the air on five completions for a total offense in the first half of 173 yards. Now looking at the Saudi Daisy team, they are led on the ground by Hayden Maynard. He has 17 yards on five carries. Spencer Gore has uh, three carries netting minus 23 yards. Quarterback four. Saudi Daisy, uh, Spencer Gore again is uh, six of 12 for 35 yards receiving for Saudi Daisy. They're led by Kashawn Eubanks. He has 16 yards on three receptions. Landon Reese has an eight yard reception. Noah Howard has a six yard reception and Landon Maynard has a five yard reception. Saudi Daisy is held to only two first downs in the first half. They have 29 total offensive yards, minus six on the ground, and 35 through the air. Look at the team side by side. Oak Ridge on the ground, they have 173 yards. Saudi Daisy, 29 through the air. Oak Ridge has 46 yards. Saudi Daisy has 35. Total offense, Oak Ridge with 173 total offensive yards in the first half. Saudi Daisy with 29. First downs, Oak Ridge has 10. Saudi Daisy has two. Penalties, Oak Ridge, two penalties for 15 yards. Saudi Daisy, two penalties for 10 yards. Again, this is Mark Hayes. We're at the half. Oak Ridge is on top of Saudi Daisy by a score of 19 to 10. And we'll be back after this two-minute timeout.
Welcome back once again to Saudi Daisy High School. David Cleary, James Branson, along with Mark and Shauna Hayes, Stuart Dorman, Ali Wexler. We also have Brian Bennett back at the station. Let's reach on top, 19 to 10. Every band is here that did not perform at halftime. Saudi Daisy put on a really nice performance here. Wildcats, I thought, in the if you take the first quarter away, I thought the Wildcats pretty much dominated uh, the, the first half of the game. The turnovers were huge for the Wildcats in that first quarter. Yeah, I don't know if it was nerves or uh, just kind of uh, not really sure what we're doing here to start the game, but uh, the Wildcats recovered a lot better in the second quarter. They got the ball moving. They uh, limited their mistakes. I think there was only maybe one penalty for five yards against them. Didn't turn the ball over in the uh, second quarter. Were able to go down and uh, score multiple times. So it's a lot better job there that they did in the second quarter, and you'd like to see their offense continue to get better and to get a little bit more complicated to keep Saudi Daisy on their toes as we progress through the game. Appreciate the class of 1989 for sponsoring our live feed on YouTube tonight. We'll take one break, one more break. When we come back, we'll have the second half. 19-10 our score back with the kickoff in 60 seconds. Welcome back once again to Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. You know, I have relatives. In fact, my great-grandmother is buried in Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, so I have a lot of relatives down here. Don't get down here much except for football games. And it, this is the 15th time in 20 years that we have played Saudi Daisy. And it seems like every year in the playoffs, James. Yeah, it does. And if you were uh, listening or watching the Wildcats early in the mid-2000s, uh, they played Saudi Daisy a lot. And I think Saudi even got one of their first wins over Oak Ridge in the, like, 2001 era as well. 28-21 overtime here is here's the kick. It's an onside kick recovered by Oak Ridge at the 48-yard line. Thank you very much for the good field position. The Wildcats will take over at the 48-yard line. Thank you. Great field position for the Wildcats. I mean, I guess that Saudi Daisy felt like they had to take a shot there to get the football back. Obviously, they only had, I think, 29 yards of total offense in the first half, as Mark reported. So they are trying to do something to get the ball back in their court or in their uh, uh, favor there. But obviously, the Wildcats end up with it really uh, well positioned there, really uh, knew what to do and what to execute as we get the ball at midfield. Wildcats, uh, if they hold on to this game, will play the winner of the West Walker Valley game. And West is way up. Game will be played on the road as the Wildcats have it first down 10 yards to go opening play for the Wildcats on offense here in the second half a little screen pass going to be caught by Kendall Jackson but they're going to lose about five on the play very well covered by the Trojans good defensive play by Saudi Daisy yeah it's a nice play there by them and uh, obviously they know that their defense has got to come out and get Oak Ridge uh, and stop them maybe cause Oak Ridge to have some more turnovers that was their most successful plays in the first half Wildcats lose five. It'll be second down, 15 yards to go, 11.39 to play. Running the ball, pounding the ball up the middle is where you're going to get it done here against this team. Yeah, and then uh, kind of being able to keep it off uh, tackle with the uh, with Mitchell Gibbons and Kendall Jackson also to kind of mix it up and maybe some play action here and there. Wildcats have two receivers, Doty Trotz, along with looks like Jonathan Stewart, the Wildcats single man to the left. Second down, 15 yards to go. Handoff goes. No, actually it was – either a missed handoff or a no handoff, it's a loss of five. So that field position that the Wildcats got to get the, the uh, on the onside kick, they resulted in two consecutive bad plays, and it's now third and 20. Yeah, it seemed like it was a little bit of a triple option read there as uh, Mitchell just <laughs> Mitchell, Mitchell just uh, decided to try to keep it, and he had Kendall Jackson go the other way. Luckily, Mitchell fell on it there and didn't get uh, too much more uh, hurt by that. Losses back to the 41-yard line. So 
They have to get to the 40-yard line of Saudi Davey. It's third and 19. So Wildcats, barring a, a really great play here, are going to have to give up the good field position. Mitchell's going to pass across the way. Nice pass, but the receiver, Dodie Truss, can't make the catch. It's almost picked off by Saudi Daisy, and indeed the Wildcats will be forced to punt. So a bad series of downs for the Wildcats. Yeah, and not really good series there as uh, the one fortunate thing that comes out of this is Brady Hudson had a really good punt previously right late in the uh, second half, or first half, I'm sorry, in the second quarter to pin Saudi inside their own 10-yard line. You hope Brady can do that again. Uh, he's been uh, pretty decent throughout the year of being able to do that. 19 to 10 is our score. Oak Ridge on top, 10, 28 to play third quarter. Good snap, plenty of time. Nice kick by Brady booming all the way back to the 15-yard line, trying to find some running room. And there's a block in the back, and the Wildcats are going to drop him anyway right at the 19-yard line. It wasn't much of a block in the back, kind of a little more of a, a more of a little push. And it'll be first down, 10 yards to go for Saudi Daisy. Oakridge defense was really, really good in the first half. Only reason Saudi Daisy scored the touchdown, really, was on that fumble return, and that was a mistake by the offense. They, uh, a special teams long return, a mistake there, set up their field goal. Yeah, and Brady improved the field position there for the Wildcats on this play as he took them back way deep. The returner even had to run backward in order to catch the football. First down, 10 yards to go for Saudi Daisy, moving right to left as we play here. Hand off to the running back, trying to get to the corner. He's going to go backwards, and he's going to be shoved and pushed out of bounds at around the 18-yard line. They're going to say the clock continues to run. It's going to be a loss of a yard on the play. Got to turn the ball up the field there, James. Yeah, David, and uh, number nine, I believe that is uh, – Bagley or Begley for them is he's really hard to tackle. He doesn't go down easy, and he just continues to stretch the play out and try to get as much as he can. Second down, a long 11 to go. They're going to pass this time. Quarterback's going to roll, look deep. Now fires a screen pass. It's behind the line of scrimmage, rolling to the three-yard line. It's going to go out of bounds. That was backwards, and they're going to have the ball at the four-yard line. And if, if the Wildcats had gotten over there just a little bit quicker, I think that might have been Cole Adams, I believe, down there. That might have been a touchdown for the Wildcats. Yeah, as it seemed like their quarterback, Barnes, got a little nervous there. And uh, as uh, Begley's telling him, it was way over his head, not able to get it. And uh, Saudi Daisy was lucky that that went backwards there and uh, out of bounds. As uh, probably looks like maybe about 25, 26 yards for first down. You need to get the ball to the 30-yard line. The ball is at the four. Third down. 26 yards to go, operating from their own end zone. Oak Ridge on top, 19 to 10. Little quick pass, going to be caught. Nice reception, but the Wildcats drop him at the 15-yard line. It'll be well short of a first down, and Saudi Daisy will be forced to punt. So the Wildcat defense continues to play well, plus getting a little help from Saudi Daisy. Yeah, and it seems like, uh, as you and I were talking at halftime, that they need to get the ball to number nine, I believe it was Begley, and they need to get to Eubanks number three. Those seem to be their two best athletes. They did on that play, and they picked up about 12 yards. That They just got to continue to do that if they want to have any success. But the Wildcat defense continues to step up. Fourth down, 15 yards to go. Punting from inside the five-yard line. Snap is good. Rolls and kicks. Blocked! Blocked by the Wildcats. It's going to take a good bounce, though. It's going to roll dead. No, it's picked up by Oak Ridge. Cole Adams. Picked it up and tried to advance it, but I don't think you can do that. It'll be Oak Ridge first and 10, the ball at the 29-yard line. Yeah, even then, that's kind of an iffy play because if you touch it and uh, Saudi Daisy is able to get back on it, that's their football and first down territory right there for them. But great play there as uh, they tried to rugby-style kick it, and it seemed like Oak Ridge was just able to get upfield, push the guy into the punter, and which ended up causing a blocked kick. Wildcats have their first down, 10 yards to go, 8.46 to play. This Saudi Daisy team won their region. They went 3-0 and in their region. This is the number one team facing the number four team. The Wildcats have the lead, 19-10. to First and 10, 29-yard line. Tyrell Romano trying to get up the field, and he does. Moves the ball, spins across to the around the 20-yard line. Very, very fine run, but one of the Trojans is down on the play. 8.34 to play. The clock is moving. It is shy of a first down. We're going to have an injury timeout. 19 to 10 is our score. We appreciate you listening to our broadcast here, whether it be on FM 92.7, FM 94.7, PrepRadio.com, Oak Ridge Schools Television, Channel 15. We're also streaming live on YouTube tonight. You can go to PrepRadio.com and watch the remaining part of the ballgame. This injury timeout is brought to you by Muncie Pharmacy, a local pharmacy dedicated to your health. We'll take a break. Oak Ridge in the lead. By a score of 19 to 10, we'll be back in 30 seconds.
back once again to Saudi Daisy. The young man from Saudi Daisy comes off the field. Appears to be okay. Second down, two yards to go for the Oak Ridge Wildcats. The ball is at the down the 20. Looks like the 21 yard line. It'll be second down, two, eight minutes, 27 seconds to play in the third quarter. 19 to 10, Oak Ridge in the lead. Wildcats have Kendall Jackson, Tyrell Ramon in the backfield, along with. Wildcat quarterback, that's Kendall Jackson moving the ball for good yardage. Moves the ball to the five, to the three, to the two. That's a touchdown for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge takes it in from 21 yards out with Kendall Jackson. 8-17 to play in the third quarter, and Oak Ridge leads 25-10. to 10. Just a nasty run there by Kendall Jackson. He just kept dragging players over and over and over, and they weren't able to tackle him. And Kendall's not a guy that you can just hit and try to pull down. Kendall's a guy that you have to hit hard, wrap up, and pull his legs together. If you don't pull his legs together, he's just going to keep them churning, and as he did on that play, he drug people for about 10 yards for a touchdown. First round of the NCAA playoffs, the Wildcats going for the extra point. The ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. The Wildcats hit the extra point and lead it by a score of 26 to 10. 8-17 to play. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. back once again to Saudi Daisy High School. The Wildcats on top, 26 to 10, 8, 16 to play. And here's the kick once again by Brady Hudson. Hits it well, end over end kick, and that's going to be another touchback. And Brady Hudson, who hit the extra point just a moment ago, has really come alive here. Yeah, really nice job by Brady. He's had some key moments here for the Wildcats. Obviously, pinned Saudi Daisy deep twice with uh, really nice punts, one inside the 10, one inside the 20 and uh, hit the extra point there, and then obviously had two touchbacks. So really, he's been a weapon for the Wildcats tonight. Since, 19, since 2014, the Wildcats and Saudi Daisy, this is the fifth time two teams have played in the playoffs. The Wildcats had victories in 2014, 2015, 2017, all at Blankenship Field, 2018 here at Saudi Daisy. Wildcats, good start in this one, 26 to 10. Saudi Daisy, first down 10, they want to pass across the way, pass is caught, nice play. They pick up a first down. The Wildcats tackle them at the 37-yard line. Bourbon, Adams, Cole Adams, Jacob, and Wildcats, Preston Turner. First and 10 for Saudi Daisy, one of the better plays they've had since the first quarter. Yeah, David, as Dodd was the receiver for Saudi Daisy on the reception, probably equaled the, long, the most yards they've had in the whole game. First down, 10 yards to go, 26 to 10, Oak Ridge. The Wildcats creep up two guys on the line. Pressure on the quarterback. He's going to throw it deep down the way. Pass is incomplete. Wow. If he turns around, that's six points. Jacob Adams had the coverage out there. The receiver just couldn't quite see it. Didn't turn around. It's second and ten. Ackerman, the Saudi Daisy receiver there, is just not able to locate the football. It looks like Oak Ridge was a little bit of a man defense there as just about everybody had somebody because of the five wide receivers. And Wildcats sent a blitz on that play, I believe, uh, even Cole Adams. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the Saudi Daisy 37-yard line. 7.55 to play third quarter. The winner advances. The loser advances their season. The quarterback is blasted. He delivers the pass, and they move the ball. And finally, the Wildcats drag him out of bounds. Cole Adams does. It's close to a first down where they spot him. It looks like it would be where he is going to spot the ball. It is a first down for Saudi Daisy. So Wildcats came in that time of pressure. Coach Gaddis said something interesting. I'll come back to the point. Remind me about pressure. And Saudi Daisy, back to pass again. 
Pass across the way, intercepted and dropped. Almost picked off by the Wildcats. It's incomplete, second and 10. Coach Gaddis said they, anytime they have tried to blitz this season, they have given up big plays, but you cannot win consistently unless you get good pressure on the quarterback, but they have not been successful doing that. Yeah, and obviously when Saudi Daisy goes five wide receivers as they do here, and that's really what's been most successful historically for them. You want to get pressure on the quarterback and force errant throws. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball at the 48-yard line. They're going to throw again. Across the way pass is going to be caught. And short gain up to the 50-yard line. Jacob Adams there on the stop along with one other Jack Weplogel. It'll be for the Trojans. Third down, eight yards to go. It'll be ball right at midfield. Stuart Dorman doing our top camera work here for us. Appreciate that along with Christian Rosas, Lee Wexler, Matthew Charles, third down, eight yards to go. 7.23 to play third quarter, 26 to 10. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge on top. Winner plays either West or Walker Valley next Friday at seven o'clock. Big pressure this time, passes incomplete. Wildcats came in with Matthew Calhoun. They came in strong and he had to deliver the pass sooner than he wanted to. It's fourth and eight and they have to go for it, I think. Yeah, and I do, I agree because, uh, you know, they're already down over, uh, I believe two or three scores at this point and you got to make up ground somehow. A uh, little bit of an errant throw again there by Saudi Days and I believe it's Barnes, their quarterback, because of the pressure. And it seems like they're trying to get it to their guys, uh, Keyshawn, I can't remember, Eubanks, and uh, number nine, Begley for them. Wildcats will drop back and put their toes right where they need to get a first down in the secondary. It's fourth down, eight yards to go from midfield. 7-11 to play, quarterback back to pass, pressured. Fires the pass, is caught for a first down. Pushed out of bounds by the Wildcats. Preston Turner on the coverage. First and 10, Saudi Daisy at the Oak Ridge 37. So Saudi Daisy starting to move the football. Starting to move the football, and I think this is what a lot of Oak Ridge fans, if you came to the games in the mid to uh, early teens here uh, at Blankenship Field, you would have seen Saudi Daisy in this five wide receiver formation a lot. This time they've got two to the right, two to the left. Quarterback back to pass, pressured, running for his life. He is sacked back at the 48-yard line. The Wildcats, it was a, everybody was coming in there. The Wildcats look like Jackson Adams, Rep Logo, a lot of white shirts in there. Big, big loss in the play. Yeah, and the Wildcats had to play a lot of man defense behind that, so it's a really good job there by the man defense to hold up and everybody get their guy covered to allow that blitz to get there and allow the def defensive line to sack the quarterback on that play. Loss on the play, and we'll call it a loss of nine. Second down, 19 yards to go. 6.37 to play, third quarter, 26 to 10. Oak Ridge on top. First round of the TSSAA playoffs. Quick pass is going to be caught, and they trip him up at around the 36 yard line. Defending was Preston Turner, along with uh, Cole Adams, Jacob Adams. It'll bring up third down. Once again, the Wildcats give him up a little bit too much space there as they get about 10 on the play. It'll bring up third and nine. Yeah, it seems like the Wildcat defense is just trying to keep everything underneath and not get beat over top. Third down 10, looks like the Wildcats want a blitz once again. Quarterback's looking at a lot of blitzers. The pass is gonna be dropped. They had a good play set up because they were gonna, sc a little screen pass. There was only one guy out there that was gonna have to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle but the quarterback was so rushed, he delivered it too quick, and number nine couldn't catch it. Yeah, one thing about uh, defense is when you blitz, you leave somebody uncovered. In that case, the I believe it was Maynard that was uncovered, and uh, obviously Saudi Daisy was just not able to complete the pass, but he would have probably still be running at this point. It's fourth down again, fourth down and nine. The ball is at the Oak Ridge 38-yard line, 5.57 to play third quarter. First round of the TSSAA playoff. It'll be Saudi Daisy coming to the line. Three receivers split to the right. One lone man to the left. Quarterback back to pass. Pressured. Dumps the pass. He's going to be caught. And the Wildcats need to make a stop here. And they don't. It's a first down. So they finally, now they don't get him down. He's going to continue on to the goal line and take it in for a touchdown. Just like Coach Dada said, when sometimes when they blitz, they've given up big plays. And Saudi Daisy dialed it up again. Yeah, and the Wildcats blitz, and uh, I believe it was Barnes able to connect there on Maynard. Just a very similar play as last time. Let the blitz come and just dink it down to uh, hopefully your people and your receivers block downfield as they did on that play. Really nice job there by Maynard. Got to wrap up and tackle and force him out of bounds if you're the Wildcat defense. That was missed tackles all the way up and down the field. They're going to go for two here. It's a 10-point game now, 26-16, to 16, 5.43 to play. 
Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Quarterback back to pass. In trouble, he is sacked. All the way back, really big play by Jack Replogle, who drops him for the two-point conversion try. It is no good. 26 to 16, Oak Ridge by 10, 5.43 to play in the third quarter. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the Saudi Daisy kickoff in 60 seconds. David Clary back here along with James Branson. We're also joined by Mark and Shauna Hayes doing our stats. We'll have player interviews and Coach Gaddis after the ball game. Appreciate you watching or listening to our broadcast on FM 92.7. If Oak Ridge can hold on and win, Oak Ridge will be in action again next week at 7 o'clock. Uh, Saudi Daisy, let's see if they line it up for another onside kick. 26-16, Oak Ridge by 10. 5.43 to play, and here's the kick. It is a squib kick. It's going to be fielded by Oak Ridge at the 25 yard line. Jalen Hayward looking for a hole, he's got one. He's at the 40, to the 45, to the 50. Down the sideline he goes to the 45 yard line of the Saudi Daisy Trojans and Oak Ridge once again will have good field position. Good return, Wildcats gotta go back to work on offense. Yeah, the Wildcats gotta capitalize on this field position. Uh, they let Saudi Daisy take advantage of uh, the last drive as the Wildcats did not in that case, and uh, you know, you're already in Saudi Daisy territory. Might as well try to eat, up, eat as much clock as you can, try to run the football. But it was a nice return there by Jalen Hayward to get upfield and to put the Wildcats again in really good field position. Wildcats are without the services tonight of Jaden Williams, the freshman who sprained his ankle. First and 10, Oak Ridge. Ball is at the 46 yard line. First and 10. Quarterback is Mitchell Gibbons. 534 to play third quarter. A lot of time to be played. Kendall Jackson running the ball. Kendall. Gains about two, moves the ball to the Saudi Daisy 43-yard line. The Wildcats' initial drive to start the second half was not a good one. The Wildcats have the lead here, 26-16. to 16. Wildcats tackling on that last drive was not good. Yeah, somewhat problematic, but I think that was partially due to the fact that they were blitzing number one and also number two, the fact that that was a very long drive by the Trojans, several third and fourth down conversions made. Second down, we'll call it eight yards to go. The ball at the Trojan 42-yard line. The play clock is down to 16. The game clock at 5.07, third quarter. Oak Ridge on top, 26 to 16. Quarterback Mitchell Gibbons at quarterback for the Wildcats at the Saudi Daisy 42. Handoff goes, Kendall Jackson. Kendall rolls, moves the ball across the 40, up to the 39-yard line. Saudi Daisy blasts him at that point, and it'll be for the Wildcats. Third down and three yards to go. Is this four down territory for the Wildcats? Uh, I don't think so, David. I think you punt it away and you try to pin Saudi Daisy deep. The Wildcats are very successful in doing that so far in the game. So it might as well take field position in this scenario. But I will say Saudi Daisy seems to be figuring out something that a lot of other teams have it against Oak Ridge and they've been able to somewhat slow down that triple option look. Third down, three yards to go. Coach Gattis said this is an excellent coaching staff down here as Wildcats need three for a first, 417 to play. And off goes to Oak Ridge's Romano. He's going to move the ball forward, going to lean forward. He's only going to get a yard. It's going to be fourth and about two. So it'll be decision time. They're going to say it's closer to a yard, fourth down than a yard to go. Looking over to Coach Gaddis. Coach Gaddis likes to send a signal sometimes that we're going to run the football. The decision has been made. The Wildcats have it fourth down, a long yard. Ball's at the Saudi Daisy. 37 yard line, three minutes, 44 seconds and counting. Wildcats, I see Coach Gaddis talking to the official. Wildcats will line it up, they need about a yard. Run the shotgun once again. Wildcats with six seconds on the play clock, 
five seconds on the play clock, and the Wildcats will call a timeout. 328 to play, third quarter, 26-16 Oak Ridge. Back to the TWSW playoffs in 60 seconds. Welcome back to Saudi Daisy High School. Fourth down the yard. The Wildcats are going for it. And there's the pitch. It's going to go to Kendall Jackson. Kendall Jackson has a first down. He moves the ball to the 30-yard line. So the Wildcats do go for it on fourth down. And as you and I were talking during the break, I said, you know, James, they just need to give the ball to Kendall Jackson. And that's what Coach Gaddis, Coach White did. And it's a 10 back of Oak Ridge first down. Yeah, and that's one of the most successful plays. It's really helped the Wildcats all night. Just a toss play. Let Tyrell get out there, kick out a def or defensive lineman or – Potentially a linebacker, let your linemen take care of their bl blocks as they did. Kendall obviously goes for about a seven-yard gain and easy first down. Chilly night here at Saudi Daisy High School. The Wildcats have the ball at the 30 of the Trojans. Three minutes to play in the third period, 26-16 Oak Ridge. The Wildcats back to pass, down the field, up for grabs, pass is incomplete. While people wide open, they had a guy open in the middle of the field, they had Jalen Hay Hayward over here to the right. But, you know, he's got a favorite target, and it's Isaiah Johnson. But if he goes to either Jonathan Stewart here near the right pylon or in the middle of the field, that's a touchdown for either one of them. Yeah, it seems like they were, Saudi Daisy was running cover two and that they knew that they liked to throw to Isaiah Johnson. He was double covered. Mitchell wisely threw that out of bounds. But he had Keon Porter standing in the end zone by himself and as well Jonathan Stewart at the corner uh, pylon. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 30, 250 to play. Third quarter, 26 to 16. Quarterback hands it off. Not much room, Tyrell Romano. It's going to be third down and 10. Yeah, I, I love the passing game as much as anybody, but I just think we just keep pounding the rock, pound the rock, pound the rock. Yeah, Saturday Daisy hasn't really been able to stop it all night. They've been able to slow it down, unlike a lot of other teams, but they haven't fully been able to stop it, except for a couple plays here and there. Obviously, the Wildcats have, still have a touchdown lead, so you want to continue to take time off the clock and force Saudi Daisy's hand to kind of act quickly and hopefully make mistakes. We're down 10 yards to go. We're down to 215 and counting in the third quarter. Wildcats will have one lone running back, slot to the right, into the two receivers to the left. Third down, 10 yards to go from the Saudi Daisy 30. Mitchell Gibbons has time, dumps it off to Porter. Porter makes the move, moves the ball forward for a gain of about three, but not much more than that. Push back, it'll be fourth down facing the Wildcats. Fourth down and about six yards to go. A very rare uh, reception there by Keon Porter. You know, it was a nice play by Keon. You know, the moment wasn't too big for him. He just got uh, caught the football. Number one, job number one. Number two, get up field and don't let anybody tackle you. And if you do, make sure you don't fumble. And he did all of those there and did a great job. Uh, senior getting a show out here in the playoffs. Wildcats going for it again on fourth down. Fourth down and seven, a minute 28 to play in the third quarter. Fourth and seven, the Wildcats need to get to the 20 yard line for a first. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Matthew Swargis to the right, Mitchell Gibbons fires a pass, it's gonna be wide open. Tyrell Romano, first down, we have a late hit on the quarterback. It is gonna be a touchdown for the Wildcats. I think we got a late hit on Mitchell Gibbons back here, but I don't think it'll matter because I think it's six points on the board for the Wildcats. Our quarterback was hit late. It's gonna be a personal foul roughing the passer against Saudi Daisy. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the call. The Wildcats, the touchdown stand, a minute nine to play. Conversation taking place, the extra point team trotting towards the field. Let's see exactly what they call. No signal. The flag went down right at Mitchell Gibbons' feet where he was hit after he delivered the, the pass. The Wildcats have the touchdown with Tyrell Romano. It is a 
Let's see. It is a per, a roughing the passer against them. It'll be Oak Ridge, I think, waiting for the signal here. The Wildcats did get the touchdown, and they will go the for the extra point. Minute nine to play. The Wildcats have six more on the board. It's a great play there by Mitchell Gibbons. Uh, the Saudi Daisy just blitzed off the Oak Ridge left side, and uh, Tyrell Romano just ran a quick out there. Mitchell knew where the blitz was coming from, knew where Tyrell was going to be, put it right on him, and let Tyrell do the rest as he got into the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. Brady Hudson to attempt the extra point, 32-16. to 16. Oak Ridge on top, a minute nine to play. First quarter, first, first TSSAA playoff game of the year. Extra point is good. Wildcats lead it 33 to 16. We'll be back with a Wildcat kickoff in 60 seconds. Welcome back once again to Saudi Daisy High School. A minute, nine to play, third quarter, 33 to 16. Interesting stat here, and it won't surprise you here. When the Wildcats are playing home games at Blankenship Field in the playoffs, Oak Ridge is 48 and 10 all time. On the road, though, they're 21 and 22. So they have one game under 500. It's tough to go on the road and win a playoff ball game. And especially the Oak Ridge has been playing so many late season ball games, third and fourth round games. Uh, on the road, and it's hard to win those on the game because uh, obviously those are really good teams. As Oak Ridge is going to kick from the Saudi Daisy 45 yard line because I think the personal foul penalty was placed on the kickoff. Ready, Hudson. Let's see if he tries to get a field goal here. He's going to kick it from the 45. He kicks it well. He hits it long. It's towards the goal post and just under it. They'll take over first and 10 at the 20 yard line. A minute nine to play. So the Wildcats answer the Saudi Daisy score. Once again, they lead it 33 to 16, our score. A good drive by Oak Ridge on a short field. Yeah, it's a really nice job there to take advantage of the position that Saudi Daisy gave them and, uh, you know, on that uh, onside kick. A couple of scores around the area. West is now leading Walker Valley 38 to nothing. Um, and Fulton is losing to Ray County 41 to 7. Wow. So that's going to be that's setting up a, a Ray County Powell ball game. 60 to 7, Powell is now leading. Wow, wow. So it'll be once again, first down 10 yards to go. The ball is at the 20 yard line. Quarterback's going to pass. Pressure to cross the way. Pass is almost intercepted by Jacob Bourbon. It would have been his second of the night. It was on a deflection. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. You know, the Wildcats are still not 100% healthy as. Um, they still have, I see Jacob Adams limping slightly. Jack Whipwogel didn't practice really much at all this week. They're without Jaden Williams, you know, another starter. But, you know, our kids are getting it done defensively. Minute four to play, 33-16 the score. Second down, 10 yards to go from the 20-yard line. Low snap, pressured, pass is going to be caught. Wildcats need to make a stop there. We might have hit them late on the other end, and that will be a personal foul against Oak Ridge. I didn't actually, yeah, there's the flag. Yeah, the Wildcats came in strong. And, you know, I know the blitz, we need to get pressure. I know we need to do that. But I think, I, I think honestly, we've done pretty well not having to put the pressure on. Yeah, and I think at this point, you know that Saudi Days is going to have to throw the ball to beat you. So just sit in your zones. You don't necessarily have to uh, blitz all the time. As uh, I think Cole Adams and Jackson Adams kind of met each other in the backfield. And, uh, just so happened that uh, Barnes was in the middle of the two of them. Uh, one score to update, 14-14, uh, Central and Davy Crockett. Wow, big ball game going up in Upper Tennessee. Uh, Davy Crockett, obviously, the penalty yards you just tipped off, so two uh, late hits on the quarterback. As I look at this Saudi Daisy team, you know, in 
previous years when we played Saudi Days, they've had these really big linemen. As I look, not big at all. Uh, not normally as big as they usually are. And, you know, thinking back the past couple years, they've had a couple really good receivers that have always been really tall and strong as well. It'll be first down, 10 yards to go, 52 seconds to play, third quarter, 33-16, to 16, the Wildcats in the lead. Wildcats showing blitz once again. Three receivers to the right, low snap, pressure, quarterback sacked. Back at the 28-yard line, so Wildcats come in again. Jacob Adams, looks like Brian Kelly, looks like a host of others. It's a big loss on the play. The Wildcats come in 56. That is Michael Williams. He is a new addition to the Oak Ridge Wildcats, a transfer from Alcoa High School. His, um, his dad was Sean Williams, one of the greatest running backs in history of Oak Ridge High School. His cousin also, Jaden Williams. 10 seconds to play in the third quarter. Let's see if Saudi Daisy gets a playoff. They're down 33 to 16. Low snap again, pass is gonna be caught. And good block out there, great block by, and they're gonna come down the sideline. Wildcats have got to tackle. He's gonna break free once again. The Wildcats had every opportunity to stop him. Let's see if Cole Adams can. He cannot, that is a touchdown. You've got to wrap up. And the Wildcats have once again allowed a big, long touchdown play when they should have had him for a first down, and that would have been the end of the third quarter. Yeah, we were just talking about their receivers and how skilled they were. Eubanks there really shows how well he does. He kind of tiptoes down the sideline here, cuts back across the field where several more Wildcats had the opportunity to wrap him up, and he's just able to run away from him there. As, uh, you know, you honestly, you just got to play till the end of the quarter. I personally thought Saudi Daisy was just going to take it to the fourth, so I would have probably been slow on that play as well. I'm going to go for the extra point here, 33-22. The kick is on its way. It's up, and it is good. So that's the final play of the third quarter. Twelve more minutes of football. One of these two teams will be headed to the second round. The other will be ending their season. 33-23 Oak Ridge back in 60 seconds. David Clary back here along with James Branson, Shauna and Mark Case, our statistician, our camera personnel. We have Stuart Norman doing the top camera up here in the press box, uh, Christian Roses, Lee Wexler, and Matthew Charles down on the field. Here comes Saudi Daisy kick to open up the fourth quarter. Still a two possession ball game, but Wildcats, here's the kick. It's gonna be a squib kick fielded by Oak Ridge at the 30 to the 35, up the field to the 40, and that is where Oak Ridge will take over. First down and 10 yards to go. So Wildcats will bring the offense on the field after the Tyrell Romano return. Ball's at the 40 yard line. The Wildcat offense gotta go back to work. Yeah, David, as uh, you know, you just gotta, if they're gonna score, you gotta answer every single time. And as we've talked about, uh, what would we'll be great is if the Wildcats can just run the ball, work the clock, continue to take time off and give Stoddy as few opportunities as they could. First down, 10 yards to go. We appreciate you listening to us on FM 92.7, FM 94.7, PrepRadio.com, Oak Ridge Schools, Television Channel 15. And we're also streaming on YouTube right now. If you go to PrepRadio.com, we'd like to thank the class of 1989 for sponsoring our streaming. First and 10, Oak Ridge at the 40-yard line. Here comes a running back, moving the ball for a gain of about three or four. That is... Tyrell Romano once again moves the ball to the 43 yard line gain of three second down seven yards to go 33 23 Oak Ridge by 10 I was telling you this it seems like every time we play Saudi Daisy we have these high scoring affairs in 2014 the final score was 53 to 28 
2015, 45 to 33. Last year is 40 to 23. The lone exception, the 2017 game when Oak Ridge won 32 to 7. But for the most part, Sonny Daisy just does not give up. Here come the Wildcats to the line. It'll be second down, seven yards to go from the 43-yard line. Here comes the handoff. The Wildcats, Tyrell, tripped up after a gain of about three. It brings up third down and three yards to go. But 11 minutes to play in the ball game. First round of the TSSAA playoffs. The Wildcats trying to beat Saudi Daisy for the fifth time in the last six years in the playoffs. Yeah, and I think one of those games that you were talking about being high scoring, I think it was the 2015 game, if I remember correctly. Oak Ridge got up really big, and then Saudi started throwing the ball really deep to make a comeback. Third down, long three to go for a first, and they jump off sides. That's a five-yard step off. Give Oak Ridge a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down. So Mitchell Gibbons gives the Wildcats a first down by the just the golden tones of his vocal cords. It's a really nice job there by Mitchell uh, being able to do what Fulton did to Oak Ridge last week and get them to jump, get Saudi Daisy to jump off sides. Obviously, the ball's right in front of you if you're a defensive lineman. You just have to pay attention to when it's snapped, and uh, you can't make a key mistake there on a third and medium where you got a chance to stop them. Oak Ridge just picks up the first down in good field position now across the 50-yard line. And the clock is wound. We're down to 10, 29 to play. First down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 49-yard line of Saudi Daisy. Hawkers just need to just keep running the ball here. First down, 10 yards to go, and then delay a game call against Oak Ridge. So the five yards, fortunately, those five yards were after the first down, so it's going to be first and 15. Got a play clock down there. I know Mitch will be upset with that. Just got to look at the play clock. Well, and I think what Oak Ridge has really been doing the past couple plays, because I've, what I've been noticing is they've been snapping it, was about three seconds left on the play clock, and uh, obviously just let it get too far down before they got the play in on that one. Wildcat offensive line's done another great job tonight here. We'll talk more about that in a minute. First and 15, Oak Ridge. Ball is at the 47-yard line. Kendall Jackson, and that's Mitchell moving the ball, moving looking for a first down across the 40, up to the 45-yard line. He's so funny. He's kind of a compact little guy. He just kind of guards the ball and just kind of moves his feet. And when he runs the ball, and one of the Wildcats is slow to get up, on the play, but I believe that is Mitchell. Let's see if he's okay. And if he's not, they'll have to bring in Hayden Tarwater into the ball game, freshman quarterback. We one of the few times as it'll be Mitchell having to come out of the game. And this injury timeout is brought to you by Muncie Pharmacy. First time all season long that Mitchell has been uh, you know, stumbled a little bit, and the Wildcats will have to warm up Hayden Tarwater. He is a freshman. Yeah, David, and this is uh, that previous play is a really nice read by Mitchell. Honestly, it's intended to go outside a little bit of a midline option, which is basically they're reading one of the uh, defensive linemen in the middle of the field. And if that guy goes out to tackle the running back, which he did, Mitchell just keeps it and goes right up the middle. It's a nice job there by him. You just like to see him get down and not get hurt on the play. And back of Oak Ridge first down, Hayden Tarwater. He's only played maybe two games all year long here. He's going to take it from the shotgun. He's got to be nervous. He's a freshman. First down, 10 yards to go. He fumbles the snap. That's, that's what you worry about, and Saudi Daisy recovers it. That's what you're concerned about right there, James Branson, is nerves. And I, I honestly, I know you want to save your timeouts, but I might have called a timeout to just kind of settle him down a little bit, get him a little bit more comfortable with the snap. He caught it, I thought, cleanly, and then as he was trying to hand it off, he turned it over. Yeah, I think you're right, David. I think it's the exchange between quarterback to running back. Obviously, it's a little bit of a different exchange going all the way across as opposed to going straight ahead on that play uh, to, as the Wildcats were able to give it up. Another turnover for the Wildcats and Saudi Daisy. And there's a low snap, lots of pressure. Sack! Sack! He goes down at the 35-yard line. Wildcats brought everybody in that time, and he had no place to go. He ran for his life. It's a loss of about seven on the play. Nine and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Mark, how many turnovers now does that give the Wildcats? <laughs> I know that we had three earlier, so I believe it's four, I believe. Lost in the play. Second down, 19 yards to go. 9-19 to play in the ball game. 33-23 to to score. The ball is at the 35-yard line of the Trojans. They need to get in Oak Ridge territory. They're going to pass. Pass is going to be caught. The Wildcats push him out of bounds. Wildcats have got to do a better job with their tackling, James. Yeah, and David, or no, 
Eubanks was the receiver on that play. Then Eubanks is special. He, he's been able to be very slippery and get out of the field and get out of tackles, as we saw previously on the last play of the uh, previous quarter. you got to just wrap him up or at least force him out of bounds because you're right next to the sideline on that one. Third down, 10 yards to go. It's it's a uh, 10 point game right now with nine minutes to play. I wouldn't think maybe they'd go for it on fourth down if they don't pick it up on this down, but we'll see. The ball is at the 42 yard line. Three receivers split to the right. Shotgun once again, third down 10. Here comes the blitz once again. Lots of pressure, pass is gonna be caught at the 43 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Saudi Daisy, and things are getting a little interesting, James Branson. Yeah, David, I was about to say, you know, Saudi Daisy may go for it on fourth down. You don't know how many possessions you'll have left, and you might as well take advantage of them. Uh, on the previous play, Eubanks get that uh, catch because it had to come out really fast. First down, 10 yards to go. We're down to 849 to play. Quarterback's going to hand it off to the running back. It's reverse here coming this way. Flags are down on the play. He's going to try to get wide. The Wildcats are going to drop him. Down at around the 35, there are flags down on the play. I have to check the call here. 8.36 to play in the game. Oak Ridge on top, 33 to 23. Official comes over. It's right where it's a lot of times holding. Back, maybe blocking the back, but something right there at the line of scrimmage. Most likely an offensive lineman not disciplined enough. Oh, wow. It's going to be a face mask against Oak Ridge. So, Wildcats. Got to, got to kind of get things going here because Saudi Daisy will not give up. No, and that's an awkward face mask too. It must have been one of the linebackers or defensive linemen because that was right in the middle of the field and it wasn't near a ball carrier in that scenario. So interesting call there. They're going to set the yardage off obviously against the Wildcats. We're down to 8.35 to play. The Wildcat defense, which has been pretty good most of the night, has given up some long plays. They're going to say it is going to be put down at the – or they're going to still walk it off from the spot. And Saudi Daisy, once again, will have good field position. The Wildcats have just got to do a better job of wrapping up right now. Yeah, and Mark and I were just talking. That's only the Wildcats' fourth penalty. So most, for the most part, they've been fairly disciplined tonight. Uh, obviously, the offsides uh, on the previous offense possession and then the face max there. As uh, I'm not sure how we got that far downfield. From the ball is going to be at the 18-yard line, eight and a half minutes to play. First down, 10 yards to go from the 18-yard line of the Wildcats. Oak Ridge up by 10. Wildcats, as we look across the field, let's see if we can try to spot Mitchell Gibbons. They're down to eight seconds on the play clock. Back to pass. Pass is going to be all intercepted by Oak Ridge. He's at the 30. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. Down the right sideline. Still on his way. These blockers. He's cutting across to the three, to the two. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Oak Ridge. The Wildcats take it all the way down the field. And Cole Adams has his second pick six of the season. And the Wildcats, just like that, reverse. It big time, baby, as Cole Adams takes it in for the score. Great concentration there by Cole Adams from his outside linebacker position. Great job by Isaiah Johnson. Isaiah Johnson originally came in, broke up the pass. Cole just works off the tip and races for an 80-plus yard touchdown there. Nice job by him. A little bit of family rivalry there, David, as Cole was really wanting a second touchdown over Jacob. And he's got it. Cole Adams, two touchdowns. Jacob Adams, one touchdown. More importantly, the Wildcats up their lead once again, up to 16 points. It's 39 to 23, and Brady Hudson will attempt the extra point. 7.57 a play, the kick is on its way, it's up, and it is good. So just like that, when it looked like Saudi Daisy was gonna march down the field and make it even a closer ball game, the Wildcat defense rises to the occasion with Cole Adams. Resilience there for the Wildcats defense. He's great job, great focus, and way to step up by the uh, Wildcat defense. Take a quick timeout. We'll be back with the Wildcat kickoff. 40 to 23, Oak Ridge back in 60 seconds.
Welcome back once again to Saudi Daisy, 40 to 23. The Wildcats, Brady Hudson kicks off in their end kick, angling to the five. It's gonna be fielded there by the Trojans to the 10, to the 15, moves the ball up the field, into the secondary, down the field he goes. The Wildcats try to slow him down, they finally do at the 45 yard line. The stop is made at that point by Preston Turner, but not before a great return. It'll be Oak Ridge back on defense. Uh, that interception return was 89 yards unofficially, which would tie him for seventh all time with Paul Bingham against Bradley in 2005. Of course, Herbert Booker has the all time record set last year, which was 89 yards. Here comes the Trojans back out on offense, first and 10, the ball at the 45 yard line, 747 to play in the ball game, 40 to 23 the score. Screen pass is going to be caught up the field. They move the ball and they tackle him and push him out of bounds right at the 50. That's not a late hit. Jacob Bourbon came in with Brian Kelly, Jacob Adams. It's a gain of about seven on the play. Brings up second down and three. What a big play by Cole Adams. Well, that's a great play there by Cole Adams. Obviously, he's got to recover very quickly and be able to get some stops here on defense to seal the game for the Wildcats. Still about seven and a half minutes, plenty of time. You got to maintain focus. Stay tuned to us with us after the ball game. We'll have player interviews and Coach Gaddis down on the field. Second down, three yards to go, 7.15 to play in the ball game, 40 to 23 Oak Ridge. Quarterback in trouble, running for his life, no place to go. He eats dirt. He is sacked at the 47 yard line. Down he goes. It's a loss of three on the play. Yeah, it's a great job there by Sam Hensley and also, I believe, Jackson Adams as uh, he. They just kind of collapsed the pocket inward and forced the quarterback to step up and able to get him down for a sack. At the 48-yard line of Saudi Daisy, 6:49 and counting, the winner advances to play the West High Rebels next week, 7 o'clock at West High School. They're way up in their ball game. Ball's at the 48-yard line. Three receivers splitting off to the left side. Single running back, single man to the right. Lots of pressure. In trouble. Quarterback gets out of that trouble. Looks to pass. Floats it up up for grabs he's going to be batted away at the last moment by the wildcats it's preston turner on the coverage it'll bring up third down and seven yards to go really good focus there by preston turner as he never really lost his man and forced him uh to push off actually it felt like the the saudi receiver to me pushed off and forced preston back up the field but really good focus there by him really good pursuit by the wildcat defensive line to force um, barnes out of the pocket to thank the class of 1989 for sponsoring our streaming live of this ball game on YouTube tonight. Appreciate Mark doing a lot of technical work, plus our stats tonight. It's fourth down, facing Saudi Daisy. Season at a crossroads right here, uh, James Branson. Yeah, and if they don't pick this up, they're in a lot of serious trouble as they can't. They call a timeout to uh, discuss what they want to do. Take a quick timeout with them. Oak Ridge on top, 40 to 23, back in 60 seconds. Quarterback once again, quarterback back to pass, floats it out here, passes incomplete, and the Wildcats will take over on downs. Jacob Adams got really good pressure on the quarterback, and the Wildcats can run the clock out here. 6.08 to play, the Wildcats up 40 to 23. Yeah, it's a really good job there by the defense. You know, they kept blitzing, kept coming after the quarterback. Obviously, they feel like if they can put pressure on the quarterback, they can force him to make bad throws, and he made two several questionable throws there toward the end of that drive. The Wildcat offense is on the field. It'll be the freshman, Hayden Tarwater, once again. Didn't have a great start. Let's see what he can do. He's got a little nerve settled here. The Wildcats, we'll have to see about Mitchell Gibbons. He got hurt on that long run. It was good for a first down. 
Here's the snap to the freshman. He's going to hand it off to Kendall Jackson, who tries to get wide. It's going to be ridden out of bounds after only about a yard gain. Then up the field, the Wildcats, a couple guys involved in a tussle with themselves. It'll be a gain on the play of only a yard. But the bad news is he got out of bounds, Mark Hayes. Uh, Mark Hayes is doing our stats. James Branson, Wildcats, second down nine. Yeah, you just got to make sure you stay in bounds. You keep the clock running there. Obviously, the clock stopped at 5.59. Only about five or six seconds went off the clock on that one. Wildcats have Isaiah Johnson split out to the left side. The Wildcats have Tarwater at quarterback. Uh, Trey Rowe is a running back into the ball game now for the Wildcats. Doty Truss in the slot. And off goes Trey Rowe. Trey Rowe with a big hole moves the ball forward. We're close to a 10 bank of Oak Ridge first down across the 40-yard line of Saudi Daisy. And they're going to officially put him down at the 39. I think that's about a yard short. It'll bring up 30 yard. Big run by Trey Rowe. Yeah, it's a really good job there by Trey as he's just able to bowl over some people there right in the middle of the line of scrimmage and even some of the linebackers and able to get Oak Ridge in a good position, third and one, to pick up this conversion. Five minutes and 39 seconds to play and counting in the ball game. 40 to 23 Oak Ridge. The Wildcats hand it off and moving the ball forward. I don't think he got it. It's going to be fourth down in about a yard. The Wildcats trying to beat Saudi Daisy in the playoffs for the fifth time in six yards. Six years, sorry. I was listening to the PA guy, but fifth time in six years, they, they've got to start hating Oak Ridge. Yeah, I, I was just thinking that because this is two years in a row we will have come down here to uh, hopefully leave with a victory, and then obviously they've made the trip three times up to Oak Ridge the past couple of years to uh, go home with a loss. As it looks like the Oak Ridge will be punting, hopefully they're playing the field position game. But the concern moving forward in the playoffs is Mitchell Gibbons, your starting quarterback who has not been hurt all year and came out of the game after that fine run. It's Four minutes, 48 seconds to play. Brady's going to punt, kicks it, nice kick. Fair catch is signal for him made. Gladly, right at the eight-yard line, and they have a long field to go. It'll be first and 10, Saudi Daisy, 40 to 23. I go back to the play of the game. Cole Adams, really, a lot of big plays in this game, but Cole's interception just kind of took the momentum away from Saudi Daisy, and the Wildcats, you know, it, it was just a huge play. Yeah, you know, that's really two times this season that's happened. The other big time that's happened is Cole made a nice read on a swing pass to that was overthrown and able to race for a touchdown against Mount Juliet to kind of spark the Wildcats in that game as well. So hopefully he's done the same thing here. Hopefully we'll get Cole on the interview. Make sure you ask him and remind him he's got two touchdowns and Jacob has one. First down, 10 yards to go. Little screen pass is going to be caught. The Wildcats try to defend. They do. Tackle him at the nine-yard line. The Wildcats, let's see, still have – Brian Kelly in the ball game, Cole Adams, Jacob Adams, Jackson Adams. The Wildcats also have Isaiah Boone, Darius Stewart in the ball game, Michael Williams. They call him Bubba. I don't know if you knew that, James, but that's what they call him. Preston Turner's out there. The Wildcats also have Jack Replogle and Isaiah Johnson. Quarterback back to pass. Pressure. Dumps it out of the backfield. He's got some running room. That's a first down run. Wildcats Preston Turner, I believe, out there to make the stop, but not before he picks up a first down. Yeah, it's a really dangerous pass there, and I would honestly keep running that if I were Saudi Daisy because he just leaks out of the backfield, and the Wildcats don't really count for him for until about 10 or 12 yards downfield. And uh, the only thing that he did wrong there is he didn't get out of bounds. Four minutes to play in the ball game, 40 to 23, our score. We appreciate the class of 1989 for sponsoring our streaming live on YouTube. And uh, the TWSAA charges a big hefty fee and the class of 89 paid that we probably won't do it again next week from west hopefully we'll get more fans over to west high school yeah, it's a lot closer to the uh, obviously oak ridge and that's a, kind of been a big rivalry recent recently between us and them because it's been a really close game the past couple years five yard step off against saudi daisy 354 to play it'll be first down 15 yards to go back to pass no blitz this time across the way pass is Incomplete. Preston Turner defending for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge leads the all-time series with Saudi Daisy, 12 to two. Those uh, only only wins for Saudi Daisy came here, 28 to 21 in 2001 in overtime. You remember that? I remember Cory Booker didn't get the ball. Still, still seething mad over that. And then in 2008, they lost at Blankenship Field, 34 to 14. Back to pass once again. Rolling to his right. Fires the pass. Is going to be caught in a nice shove by Isaiah Johnson. No, he didn't catch it. He goes out of bounds. Pretty good, pretty good defense as a, I don't know if that's a flag or not. I did. I guess there is a flag. Good eyes there, James. You're much younger. 341 to play 
the Wildcats trying to win their sixth game of the year. Really nice play there by Isaiah, honestly, to make that shove because the guy was still in bounds. The pass hadn't been completed yet, and Isaiah really kind of broke that up, forcing the guy to fumble um, the catch there. Officials having a long conversation here. 3.41 to play in the ball game. Appreciate you listening to your broadcast here from Saudi Daisy and watching. That's true. Class of 89. Shout out to you once again. And uh, I'd like to thank Mark. Mark worked on this all week. We started last week at the Fulton game. We tested it. We tested it. But, you know, and we kind of did it on my Facebook, actually. But then we went to YouTube today. And, you know, it, in terms of, I, I guess we had some early sound issues, but we got those taken care of. And it looks like the Wildcats are going to head home with a victory. And we appreciate feedback because, honestly, that tells us what we need to work on. Now, Herbert Booker's listening to us somewhere, probably at school right now. He's commented all throughout the game on the YouTube. It's a penalty against them. An eligible receiver downfield. The quarterback's going to pass across the way. Pass is incomplete. Now, what would be funny if Cole could get number three here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's going to be third down and 20 yards to go, 334 to play. James is going to go down on the field. Hopefully he'll get a chance to talk to Cole. And let's see. And we need to find out about Mitchell for sure uh, before we get going there. I'm looking across the field there. He's He's been so durable this year. He's, you know, he's just been so good for the Wildcats. Well, when you think back to the Hardin Valley game, he was taking a lot of hits and uh, – Really, the line and offense has progressed really well where he hasn't taken as many throughout the year. Hit harder tonight than I think any other game. It's third down, 20 yards to go. Back to pass again. Cranks it up long. Pass is going to be caught. Oh, great over the catch, over the shoulder catch. Brian Kelly was defending, but not before he picks up a first down. It's a beautiful throw, the best throw of the night for him, and a great over-the-shoulder catch. Yeah, I think the catch was – the throw was really great because it's perfectly placed along the sideline, but it's a really nice catch there. I think Eubanks is a pretty good player for them. Yeah, he is. It'll be another first down for Saudi Daisy, 327 to play. Wildcats up 17 right now, 40 to 23. First and 10, Saudi Daisy. Back to pass. Here comes the pressure again. He gets out of it, goes across the way, passes incomplete. Isaiah – Johnson defending for the Wildcats. Jacob Bourbon as well. Oak Ridge on top, 40 to 23. Three minutes, 23 seconds to play in the ball game. So as I mentioned, the Wildcats and Saudi Daisy have been playing a lot of football since 1999. This is the 15th time they've played Saudi Daisy in five times in the playoffs. I think one of my most memorable ones back when I was playing was when Rick Daniels Mulholland slammed the guy up at. Uh, I don't even remember his name, but at uh, Blankenship in 2004. Place halted here just for a second. 3.23 to play. Officials timeout as um, the Wildcats lead it 40-23. to 23. Not, a, not a great turnout of Oak Ridge fans across the way. It is a long trip, but uh, and unfortunately maybe our streaming had something to do with that because I know a lot of people have been watching it. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is at the just across the 45-yard line, three receivers split to the left, four-man front for the Wildcats. 3.23 to play, quarterback facing pressure, dumps the pass, incomplete, almost intercepted. I mean, once again, it was a lot of white shirts. That guy's been running for his life all night. Well, and he definitely didn't get want to get hit on that play. It looked like four Oak Ridge Wildcats were right in his face as soon as he threw it. He was just trying to get it as close to the receiver as he could on that play. He's going to bring up third down, 10 yards to go, 3.20 to play in the ball game. We'll have player interviews. Stay with us here. We're going to have player interviews and Coach Gaddis down on the field there. We'll have the statistics, the scoring summary, if uh, Mark has that ready for us. You know, you know what Mike said. He would have it ready by now. It'll be third down, 10 yards to go. The Wildcats showing blitz once again. Creep up on the line of scrimmage. Here comes the pass. The pass is going to be incomplete. That pressure continues to cause him trouble. It's fourth down and 10 yards to go. The clock didn't move. It's still at 320. It'll be fourth down, 10 yards to go. We had some rain down here in the Hamilton County area, but the field is just fabulous. I mean, it looks really good. Uh, the Bermuda is turning brown like our, our old blanket ship used to, but the field is, conditions have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and I think last year we came down here and it was a really kind of a soggy, wet field, but obviously it's much better this year. They've obviously been able to take care of it, and it looks great, and it hasn't really affected the game at all. This is the first round of the TSSAA playoffs. It's fourth and ten. Trying to run, trying to pass. Pass is intercepted and dropped. 
Wildcats had it right at the 35 yard line. Either way, they're gonna take over on downs. Jacob Bourbon, incomplete. And the Wildcats take over first and 10. I'm assuming there's a reason he's playing linebacker, David. But uh, obviously, you know, he's a, he uses his speed a lot. He's a great kid. He already had one interception earlier in the game. Was in great position. Uh, but I think Mark made a good point. It's almost better that you drop the ball in that scenario because you end up back on Saudi's side of the field, whereas opposed you could have been on your own side of the field. I can guarantee you if that had been Jacob Adams right there, <laughs> he is going to return that as hard as he could. Well, especially because he's now a touchdown behind. Cole Adams, two touchdowns. Jacob Adams, one touchdown. <laughs> Wildcats first down, 10 yards to go. The ball's at the 46-yard line. 3-11 to play in the ball game, 40-23. to Tarwater at quarterback for the Wildcats. The freshman handing it off to Trey Rowe. And not much much room there, but there's just not much the Saudi Daisy can do down 17. No, there's not much here. As uh, Oak Ridge, you know, just going to work the clock. I think I uh, see a few of the subs in for the Wildcats besides Trey. Uh, I think you also see uh, Eric Herrera in there, obviously Matthew Swagger. You see Keon Porter back in the game. So it's nice to see these guys get a little opportunity in the playoffs here. Some of those offensive linemen there, too. I see Vinny West down there for Oak Ridge, the Wildcats. 61 as well in the ball game as it'll be second down and 11 yards. Case and Staggs in the ball game. As the Wildcats, Hayden Tarwater, freshman. What do you bet Hayden never thought he'd be playing in the first round of the playoffs? As he hands it off. No, it's Hayden handing off to Keon Porter. He bounces outside and bounces down. He's going to be dropped for a loss back at the 50 yard line. See if Saudi Daisy even tries. They are not going to stop the clock. Two minutes, 13 seconds to play. It's going to be third down and about 12 yards to go. The loss is back to the 49 yard line. Are you surprised Saudi's just going to let it go? I mean, 17 points, but. But I'm kind of surprised they didn't call, you know, try to slow it down. I think it's still a three-score game. But, I mean, obviously you want you to give your guys as much opportunity as possible to win the game, especially your seniors. Third down, and we'll call it 12 yards to go. A minute 49 to play in the game. Let's see if Tarwater tries to deliver a pass. I wouldn't, but we'll see. He's a good kid. Played at Jefferson Middle School for his career. And he's going to try to hand it off to Trey Rowe. And I, I can just tell you right now. Um, the Wildcats will only have a full week to get ready for West, hopefully with Mitchell Gibbons playing next week. Yeah, obviously Mitchell gives you the best option. Nothing against Hayden Tarwater uh, at all, but Mitchell's more experienced. He even got some experience playing time last year, even close to the end of the season in the playoffs. He's had a great year this year, almost getting close in touchdown records and uh, passing records, and so he's had a great year. You want him to be okay. Down to a minute 35 to play in the ball game. 40 to 23 Oak Ridge. Brady Hudson will be punting in a moment as the clock has stopped with 95 seconds to play. So uh, Wildcats headed for their sixth win and their fifth consecutive win over Saudi Daisy. Saudi Daisy's last win over Oak Ridge came in 2008. That was at Blankenship Field, 34 to 14 as the Trojans call a timeout. And James, I know you're gonna get ready to go down on the field and and talk to some of the players and Coach Gaddis and um, talk about this victory. Yeah, it's been a really nice trip down here for the Wildcats. Obviously, didn't start off the best, but they have recovered and uh, gotten better throughout the game. We'll take a quick timeout, send it back to Brian Bennett. 40 to 23 Oak Ridge. We'll be back to Saudi Daisy, Tennessee in 30 seconds. back once again to Saudi Daisy High School. It's fourth and 17, minute 35 to play in the ball game. 40 to 23, the Wildcats in the lead on a chilly night in Saudi Daisy. Brady Hudson will punt the ball away for the Wildcats. Good snap, punt is away. Low, end over end kick. It's gonna be rolling inside the 20 and will be downed <laughs> by Oak Ridge right at the 16 yard line. James is headed down to Saudi Daisy. So looks like Stuart Dorman, the Wildcats are going to take home a victory. Yeah, they are, David. After a rough start to the game with a few tur nasty turnovers in the first quarter, Oak Ridge uh, had a great recovery and uh, turned out to play great on defense and offense. 
want to once again thank the class of 1989 for sponsoring our, our, our telecast on YouTube today. And uh, I guess we'll archive that and they can watch it, I guess, whenever, whenever they want to. Again, it's a victory. Uh, it's going to be the 22nd road victory all time in the playoffs for Oak Ridge. Minute 22 to play, Saudi Daisy trailing 40 to 23. First down, 10 yards to go, quarterback to pass. No, he is smashed, sacked at the eight yard line. Wildcats come in with Michael Williams along with a couple of others. It's gonna be a loss on the play of about eight yards. That young man from Saudi Daisy is gonna be sore tomorrow. As it'll be second down and 16 yards to go or at the one minute mark of the game, a little quick pass is gonna be caught and Wildcats make the stop up at the 23 yard line. It'll bring up third down, three yards to go. Saudi Daisy still has the one timeout, but I think their fate is sealed and they know it as the Wildcats lead it 40 to 23. It's third down, three yards to go. Remember, we'll have a scoring summary in the final statistics, Coach Gaddis and player interviews down on the field. Back to pass, cross the way pass, boom, big stick. Wildcats, the hammer. Jacob Adams drops him at the 30 yard line. It's third down and three. Yep, Jacob Adams with a big hit there. He's had a great game tonight, but uh, I don't know if he's outmatched his brother because also obviously Cole has two touchdowns and Jacob only one. It'll be third down, three yards to go. We're just keep digging at the Adams family right now. Fourth down, three yards to go, 32 seconds to play. Quarterback fires a pass, incomplete. And the Wildcats will take over on downs. And the Wildcats are headed for a victory in 27. And you'd expect Oak Ridge to take a knee right here and headed back to the ridge with a first round TSSAA playoff win over the Saudi Daisy Trojans. 40 to 23 will be your final score. I believe they'll probably just take the knee and head it back to the house. Yeah, Saudi Daisy showed great resilience in this game at times where you think this game was kind of uh, too far out of reach for Saudi Daisy. They showed great resilience and kept in the game, but I think Oak Ridge is a little bit too much for them in the fourth quarter. That's Stuart Norman talking to me. James Branson is headed down to the field. We'll have Coach Gaddis and player interviews as the Wildcats will just take a knee here. And with 27 seconds to play, this should be the final play. And the timeout is going to be not called. They're just going to take the knee, and that is going to be your final score. Oak Ridge has defeated the Saudi Daisy Trojans in the first round of the TSSAA playoffs by a final score of 40 to 23 as the two teams will shake hands at the 50-yard line as the Wildcats head it back home with a victory over Saudi Daisy. Fifth time in six years the Wildcats have ended Saudi Daisy's season. The second consecutive year here at Saudi Daisy High School. As I mentioned, we'll have player interviews. We'll have Coach Joe Gaddis. We'll have the scoring summary. Stay with us, whether on the internet, on FM 92.7, FM 94.7. We'll take a break now. 40 to 23 our score, and we'll be back to Saudi Daisy in three minutes.
back once again to Soddy Daisy High School. The Wildcats victorious by a final score of 40 to 23. That is the final score. In the second, we're going to go down to James Branson to get some player interviews. I see Mitchell Gibbons. He still has his helmet on, and he's talking it over with some people. He looks okay. He's not being assisted. I just hope maybe he'll be able to get out there and play. The Wildcats are banged up. We're going to go down to the field here in the second. I'm looking for James. Have you spotted him? as we'll go down to the field in just a second. 40 to 23 is your final score as the Wildcats have knocked off the Saudi Daisy Trojans again. I mean, it, it kind of like in the old days when we used to play Sevier County a lot, that um, the Wildcats would always knock off Sevier County and end their season. Saudi Daisy's got to start hating Oak Ridge right now in two consecutive years on the road as once again, we'll, as I said, I said, we'll have interviews. I'm, I'm just trying to look down on the field. There's a mass of humanity down on the field. It should be pretty easy to spot James. He'd be the guy without the socks on. And the and the um, um, as I see him down here, I think at the 15-yard line, I believe. And I think he's probably trying to look for. He's got Cole, looks like Kendall Jackson. In a second, we'll go down to him down on the field. And let's go down to James now. James Branson down here at Soddy Daisy High School and on their field, joined by Kendall Jackson. Kendall, you've really turned it on the past couple weeks. You've had uh, over 100 yards rushing the past couple weeks, and you had a great week this week. Uh, what's gone into your preparation the past couple weeks? Um, you know, for the past couple of hours of the week, um, I've been good practices, you know, just looking up on practices, going in the face three and just got to see what it's face now, obviously, you haven't fumbled the football recently, and you guys seemed pretty upset after last week. What was your motivation coming into this week, knowing that it was basically win or go home? You got to have them in a the mindset that it ain't no tomorrow. There, there is no tomorrow. Kenny, you had a nice run to kind of put Oak Ridge further in the lead. I believe it was in the uh, second quarter there when you got in, you went in, and basically you got wrapped up around the 10-yard line. You just decided you wouldn't be denied. What went into that play? I believe you went off tackle for your touchdown. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, like, when you score, you're not thinking. You just know getting the end zone, getting the end zone, getting the end zone, and that's like what I was thinking. Get the end zone score. Now, Kendall, I think one of the things that you guys have put into your uh, preparation and into your game plan throughout the past couple weeks is more of a triple option look to where they kind of fake it either to you or Tyrell, and then Mitchell pulls it, and then he has the option to run it or to pitch it out to you guys. Is that something that you continually work on throughout the week, and how has that made you better? Of course. Um, we work on that all. It's the second half of the season, we worked on it. And that it just increased our offense a whole lot because either way it goes, the defense has to read somebody, and if they don't know how to read, then you know, that's all open all night. So. Kendall, you've had a great game. Obviously, you probably want to give a shout-out to your offensive line for blocking so well for you guys. Shout-out to Ayer. Shout-out to Kesselton, uh, Vinny West, um, uh, Hewitt, Tyler Galloway. Big feet, go! So, Oak Ridge gets a great win here. Uh, Kendall, what's it going to take this week, preparation, knowing that you're probably going to play West, a team that I don't think that you got their best or you gave them your best shot earlier in the season. Are you guys out looking for revenge next week? Of course, you know, we got our offense together now. Our offense is really starting to move. We didn't play them earlier in the season. Our offense really wasn't moving that well. So now we're moving really good, and so we need to be really good again. Kendall, congratulations on the win, and look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks. We'll keep it right here as we are joined by Cole Adams. Cole, a linebacker for the Wildcats. Cole, uh, what was the motivation coming into this week, knowing that you had to build off of last week and improve? Well, I felt like this week was really about pressuring the quarterback, 
not letting the deep balls, and that was our main focus, and they didn't have one deep ball. We had multiple sacks. We pressured the quarterback every play. We had four picks because of it, and I, I just think that's what, that was the motivation. Now, you guys forced them to throw a lot, which I think, I don't think they felt really comfortable doing because the, the timing wasn't always there. They were trying to get it to number three or number nine a lot. What was your preparation going into the week, knowing that if you made them throw, you had a good chance of winning? Well, we knew that the like from the first half, uh, they they could not run the ball on us. I think their most their furthest game was eight yards, or that one screen when they had like ten or twelve. And as uh, Isaiah and uh, Preston had a great game locking down number three and number nine. And then the, the, the quarterback pressure from the D linemen and the blitzes from the linebackers, they had no option. Uh, they could scramble, and that we also had our answer. Cole, now obviously, let's get to the play about you, okay? <laughs> what happened on that play? Because it looked like Isaiah had the guy covered, got it, got tipped, and I personally lost sight of the ball. Clearly, you did not because you just picked it up and ran about 89 yards for a touchdown. I I saw the ball. I saw him. He was throwing it, and uh, I was like, I'm going to die for this. And then he tipped it up, and I was like, this is my opportunity. I, I can run with it now. So I, I caught it, and I down for the races. So – we, may, we pointed this out several times. You are now up in the family tally here, two to one. <laughs> Let's reiterate that, two to one. So is Jacob coming for you? I, we can ask him. <laughs> hey, Jacob. I have two touchdowns and you have one. <laughs> he just said we have next week, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll have three and he'll have one. Is that something that you guys have always had, very competitive spirit between one another? Oh, yeah. As, as when uh, me and him were little, we both uh, played both sides of the ball, and so it was more of a who can get the most touchdowns and the most tackles. And now that me and him are both both defensive players, uh, you know, it's just like fumble recovery, pick, you know. And he dropped a lot of picks, so. <laughs> Does that help build you guys, push, you push one another, and then also, also push your other teammates? Oh, yes, of course. I think uh, I think Jacob is one of the well, – a big captain and leader on this team, and the competition between me and him – uh, you know, kind of brings that up into things. You know, it's like, you know, it's a brotherhood rivalry, you know, so. And I think uh, we have a bunch of other really good captains, too, that we look up to. Cole, it looks like you guys will be playing West next week. Talk a little bit about your preparation motivation going into next week. Oh, it's it's revenge time. It's revenge time. We're, we're going we're gonna to beat West. Yeah. All right. Well, Cole, congratulations on the win. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll keep it right here one more time because, obviously, you couldn't have Kendall Jackson if you didn't have Tyrell Romano this year. Tyrell obviously getting more carries, and I think Kendall mentioned that the triple option has worked for you guys really well this year. Tremendously, I'd say uh, we've been uh, we've been that we've been doing that since like three years in a row now, and uh, it seems just can't stop it. Uh, me and Kendall and Mitchell all running for us like that's really helped. Me. I think you pointed out Mitchell as a running threat is really key because a lot of people don't see Mitchell as a running threat because he can throw really well, but when he does keep it, he makes good decisions. Yeah, he, he we always tell him, we always ask him, are you going to slide? We do not want to get you hurt. We don't have no really good backups. He's saying that he is not going he's not going to slide. He's going to run him over every single time. So I love his aggression. I love Mitchell. Like, he's really good. Tyrell, we were talking about your mentality and how hard you run. Do you just have the mindset that you're not going to be tackled because you are so strong in your lower body that it's so tough to tackle you? Yeah, every single time I'm out there, I always run like feel like angry. Like all the anger I built up with me, all the stuff I have still in my like at home, I, I, I take it out right here. Every time I run the ball. Now, Tyrell, you're a senior. What does a playoff victory mean to you? That you besides just getting to play one more year? Uh, it didn't really mean nothing to me at uh, sophomore and junior year, but. Senior year, like I'm, like it, it means so much to me being part of Oak, like Wildcats, like Oak Ridge, like, and this victory is just feels so good. Like I just can't wait. Tyrell, what's your motivation going into next week? Knowing that you got West, knowing that you guys uh, lost at home, gonna go to West. We played there before, kind of hostile environment. What's you guys' preparation got to be next week? Uh, we know that uh, they have a lot of dual threats. Twelve, we gotta keep on like keep an eye on. Uh, we just gotta play Oak Ridge football. Tyrell, congratulations on the victory and. Uh, well, hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you, sir. And, uh, David, I think we'll just go ahead and keep it right here. As Coach Gaddis is talking to Cole Adams. Uh, Coach, if you don't mind, uh, first off, congratulations on a victory. Didn't start out very well, but obviously it felt like you guys took control and uh, were able to pedal the metal from the first quarter on. Uh, yeah, turnovers early hurt us. Uh, our defense bailed us out uh, for sure. We were creating some turnovers of, of their own. It's been a while since we intercepted a pass, and I think we had four tonight, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe a fumble. I, I can't recall. Uh, huge plays, and we just got there. And then I thought.
thought was just a, two things that I preached all week is run the football, which they did a pretty good job, and uh, and then don't let the pass, you know, the deep pass. We, we've had problems with that the last couple of weeks. So you don't give up the deep pass. I don't think we did. I mean, we intercepted four. So, you know, those two things were huge. And, uh, you know, the big play by Cole at the end was absolutely huge because at the point I think that he was down to 10 and the quarterback was hurt. I didn't know what we could do offensively without him. So uh, uh, the Cole and the Cole interception, the Cole Adams interception late was a, a huge, huge play. One thing that we've kind of been harping on is Cole Adams is now up 2-1 to one on Jacob Adams. So in touchdown, so obviously that competition is uh, going to continue. You talked about the touchdown. I think one of the things that stood out with special teams wise, Brady Hudson, ten uh, Saudi days in deep inside the twenty once, inside the ten once, had two kickoffs go in the end zone, uh, came in on an extra point. He really, he did, and I don't know if you saw this. You probably did. He he probably kept them from running one back for a touchdown. He slowed him down enough for someone else to make the tackle. Uh, our coverage was not good tonight on two occasions. That was huge. But uh, but Brady did a good job. He, the first kickoff he wasn't happy with was out of bounds. But after that, he did a real good job. He came in on extra points. And, uh, you know, we've had a problem with those. But he came in, I think, nailed every one that he tried. Coach, you mentioned, mentioned Mitchell Gibbons a moment ago. Uh, obviously, he left the game. Is he okay? Non-throwing shoulder um, issue. And uh, you know, he was really had a little blurry vision, too. And uh, I think he's going to be okay. He won't be. 100% with that shoulder next week, I wouldn't think, but he'll, I think he'll be ready to go at some capacity. Obviously, our region did really well. Uh, Powell won, West won, and uh, I believe Fulton did not, but uh, they were uh, getting beat by Ray County. So I think that means for us we are headed to West. Obviously, uh, a little bit of a, re a revenge game or an opportunity to go and prove that uh, earlier in the season was not the Oakridge football that you want to see. No, uh, you know, the Hardin Valley game was not a good start for us. Then Dobbins Bennett got even worse. Uh, they're, they're a good team, though. Then I think we came back and beat Campbell County, beat Farragut. Uh, and then West, we lost, I believe it was 24-7. to Just a great defensive team. Um, you know, we were in the ball game. Uh, we're a much better team now. You know, I don't know. I'm assuming they're, they're better, too, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, we're glad to have the opportunity to go over there and play them. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We play good against good teams. So, you know, they're a good team. Obviously, it's close to the home as well, so you'll get – the atmosphere should be really electric. I think so. West has got a good following. Uh, we'll take a lot of people over there. Uh, you know, I think our guys, our fans know that, that we have, especially the last half of the season, played pretty well against good football teams. So, uh, you know, I expect us to play well Friday night. Coach, uh, going into next week, knowing who you're going to play, uh, what's the motivation for these guys, especially the seniors? Uh, obviously, you want to continue their momentum. You know, uh, you know how it is. Uh, somebody in next week, either us or West, their seniors will never play another high school football game. So that's all the motivation you need. Uh, the underclassmen, you know, they, they want to win too and keep the season alive. So uh, their seniors, I'm sure, will do everything they can do uh, to pull off a victory and extend it to get one more week. Coach, congratulations on the win. Look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you. David, we will send it back up to you as Oak Ridge is victorious, 40 to 26. Thanks a lot, James. Let's give it over to Mark Hayes. He's got the scoring summary and the final statistics. Thank you very much, David. As you said, Oak Ridge victorious tonight by a final of 40 to 23. Look at the scoring summary quickly. Saudi Daisy got on the board uh, in the first quarter on a about 50 yard uh, fumble return. I apologize for not having the exact yardage. Um, the point after attempt by Cooper Hamilton was good, and Saudi Daisy lodged lead seven to nothing. With 4 29 remaining in the first quarter, Oak Ridge scores on a four yard run by Tyrell Romano. Camden Malcovey comes in for the extra point, which is no good, and Oak Ridge cuts in the lead uh, six to seven. With 235 remaining, in the first quarter, uh, Cooper Hamilton for Saudi Daisy kicks a 24-yard field goal up and good, and Saudi Daisy led at that point 10 to 6. Going into the second quarter, Oak Ridge gets on the board with 10-29 on a four-yard run by Mitchell Gibbons. Two-point conversion was no good, but Oak Ridge was able to take the lead 12 to 10. With, five, uh, with rather 55.8 seconds on the clock in the first half, Kendall Jackson runs in eight yards for the Wildcats after the point after attempt by Malcody is good. Oak Ridge led at the half by a score 
of 19 to 10. In the third quarter, Wildcats once again get on the board with 8-17 remaining in the third quarter on a 21-yard run by Kendall Jackson. Point out the attempt by Hudson was good, and Oak Ridge extends their lead 26-10. to 10. With 5.43 remaining in the third quarter, 39-yard pass from Isaac Barnes to Maynard for the Trojans of Saudi Daisy. The point, the two-point conversion was no good as Jack Replogle was able to sack the quarterback. At that point, Oak Ridge led only by 10, 26 to 16. With 109 remaining in the third quarter, 27-yard pass from Mitchell Gibbons to Tyrell Romano, puts the Wildcats up 33 to 16 after the Brady Hudson extra point was good. As time ran out in the third quarter, 71-yard pass from Barnes to Eubanks for Saudi Daisy um, puts the Trojans within 10 of the Wildcats. Wildcats led 33 to 23 at the end of the third quarter after the point after attempt by Hamilton for Saudi Daisy was good. In the fourth quarter, Wildcats score once again on an 89-yard interception return. And the Wildcats go up 40 to 23 after the Hudson point out attempt was good. So that's how we get to the final tonight. Oak Ridge victorious, 40 to 29. Looking at the statistics for Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge was led on the ground by Kendall Jackson. He had 13 uh, carries for 104 yards. Tyrell Romano, 75 yards on 14 carries. Gibbons. Rushed the ball seven times, totaling 13 yards on the ground. Trey Rowe had four carries for four yards. Uh, Kayon Porter carried the ball once for minus two yards, and Hayden Tarwater came in late. He had a, a carry for minus six, which was a fumble. Res uh, passing for the Wildcats, Mitchell Gibbons, he was eight of 15 for 71 yards. He had two interceptions in the ball game. Receiving for the Wildcats, Tyrell Romano led all receivers for the Wildcats. He had three receptions for 50 yards. Preston Turner had a nine-yard reception. Isaiah Johnson with a seven-yard reception. Jonathan Stewart had a seven-yard reception as well. Keon Porter had a three-yard reception. And then Kendall Jackson had a reception for minus five yards. So as a team, the Wildcats had 188 yards on the ground on 40 carries. They had 71 yards through the air on eight receptions for a total offense tonight of 259 yards. Wildcats accumulated 13 first downs in the ball game. They had let's see uh, four penalties for 45 yards. Now looking at Saudi Daisy, they were led on the ground by Hayden Maynard. He had 15 yards on six carries. Fishon Eubanks had a 10-yard carry, and quarterback Isaac Barnes had nine carries, netting minus 74 yards. As a team, the Trojans rushed the ball 16 times, netting minus 49 yards on the ground. Through the air, much more successful. Isaac Barnes was 21 of 42 for 302 yards. He had four interceptions in the ball game. Receiving for the Trojans, Fishon Eubanks, led with 11 receptions. He had 189 yards on those 11 receptions. Hayden Maynard had four receptions for 77 yards. Landon Reese had three receptions for 23 yards. Noah Howard had eight yards on two receptions, and Landon Maynard had a five-yard reception. So on the ground, as I said, minus 49 yards gained for the Trojans on 16 carries, 302 yards. Positive on 21 receptions for a total offense tonight of 253 yards. Uh, they had eight first downs in the ball game and they were penalized six times for 40 yards. So looking at the team side by side on the ground, Oak Ridge had 188 yards. Saudi Daisy minus 49. Through the air, Oak Ridge with 71 yards. Saudi Daisy 302. Total offense very even. Oak Ridge with 259, Saudi Daisy 253. First downs, Oak Ridge had 13, Saudi Daisy with 8. Penalties, Oak Ridge, 4 penalties for 45 yards. Uh, Saudi Daisy, 6 penalties for 40 yards. So again, this is Mark Pace after telling you the final score. Oak Ridge victorious tonight by his final score 
uh, 40 to 23. David? Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate that. Appreciate all the good work tonight. And appreciate your work getting this uh, screening. Good job, Stuart, on the, on the top camera. We went all the way through the night. We have had the complete screening of the broadcast. Appreciate all of our camera personnel. Kristen, Matthew, Lee, Stuart, and Hinkle. So, and then our, our statistician.